Okay, it's, is it only towards the end?
you wanted to put on the record before the jury comes in? I I believe so, Your Honor. We had a, we had a discussion off, off the record uh, to plan our uh, going forward here. So um, I think there was a few things we resolved. Uh, oh, I know. One of the things is the uh, Facebook. That's what I was going to address. But do you, do you want to do that outside the presence of the jury or in front of the jury? Oh, no, I actually think we should do it in front of the jury. Okay, I, that's I agree. Right. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, counsel on needs to water her client. I think that should happen outside the residence of the jury. Right. Oh, okay. That's right. Mrs. Crumley, could you raise your right hand? <coughs> do you swear or affirm the testimony about the deal is the truth? I have to I do. And can you tell me your name? Jennifer Crumley. Okay. We, we just have a few questions for you. Okay. 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 Mrs. Crumley, when we were in court on Friday, um, there was discussion about admitting the Facebook Messenger messages between yourself and James Crumley. Correct. Do you recall that? Yes. And on Saturday, I came over to the jail to see you, and that was specifically a topic we discussed. Yes. Okay, and at this time, um, we have talked about how during the trial, there was talk about re redacting portions of that Facebook Messenger thread um, pursuant to other orders, correct? correct? And the court offered me the opportunity to redact portions of that record. Correct. And after you and I discussed it, it's fair to say that uh, you and I believe that it would look like we are hiding um, evidence from the jury if they saw a redacted version of Exhibit 423. Correct. Correct. Okay, wait till I finish speaking before you start. Okay, so at this time, I have let the court know that we are not moving for any redactions and that Exhibit 423 will be admitted um, showing your entire phone conversation with James on Facebook Messenger. And Your Honor, there's specific dates it's from, so I think I should put the dates on the record. It might be on the... Yeah, I'll just grab it. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have the exhibit. It wasn't with the initial uh, folder I had. Do you know the dates? January 21. Okay, so there are the... It's yeah, the early 2021. It's the entire Facebook messenger thread between you and Mr. Crumbly starting in January of 2021, and it goes up through um, the events that lead us here today. Correct. Okay, is it your decision to allow those Facebook messages to be admitted through in the court without redaction. Yes. And you and I have talked about the pros and cons of redacting those exhibits. Correct. And at this time, you understand they will be admitted without any redactions. I do. Okay. And just a few. Sure. Mrs. Crumley, you understand that Exhibit 423 won't just be given to the jury, but the prosecution can go through that with 
either you on a cross-examination or with other witnesses. Correct. And you consulted with your attorney specifically about that point? Yes. And it is your decision as a defendant in the case in con consultation with your attorney as part of trial strategy to admit this entire exhibit? Yes. Okay. Uh, and to be clear, this is the Facebook message thread mm -hmm. between Jennifer and James Crumley beginning January 1, 2021. And it's over 2,000 pages long. Exhibit 423. And Mrs. Crumley, you understand that throughout the pendency of this case, your attorney on your behalf has sought to exclude certain themes or topics of evidence, in some cases successfully, yet this Facebook conversation does touch upon some of those. I understand. And you still want 423 to be admitted into evidence and referenced by the prosecution and defense? Yes. I'm satisfied. All right, anything else that has to be out of the presence of the jury at the, <coughs> at the moment? We're, um, we're dealing with uh, your other, we're gonna deal with your other, the other issue that you brought up about the snow. About the oh, night. yes, okay. But we'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. What else? All right, we're going to bring the jury in, okay? Thank you, Judge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Seated. Thank you again for being kinder. We weren't ignoring you. We were just sort of fading away. So um, every day requires some certain preparation. So we appreciate you. Um, who's the next witness? Ms. Kira Peck. Your oh. Honor, I'm sorry. Before, the, may I please address the court? Sure. Okay. Your Honor, on uh, Friday, I think it was very clear beyond a reasonable doubt. I have difficulty and cannot use technology. Um, in my frustration, I made a comment that was offensive to victims, victims' families, and I did it absolutely by accident um, as I was struggling with my computer. I am apologizing for that comment. I want to apologize to the jurors, to the audience, to all involved, and specifically to the victims and the families of the victims. I truly did not mean to say the comment I made. I believe that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Do you, do you want to approach just for a second? I'm, I'm supposed to ask the camera person to cut them up. Yeah, it's new today. Ms. Kira Penn. Good morning. Good morning. Could you raise your hand? Yes. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give? Is it true? So help you that. I do. All right. Could you be seated? And then would you state your name for the record and spell your first and last name, please? My name is Kira Penn. K I R A. P-E-N-N-O-C-K. Thank you. Go ahead, Prosecutor. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Kira, can you tell the jury how old you are? I am 27. Okay. And you actually have a, a pretty robust um, career at 27. Can you tell the jury what you do? I uh, own and run a horse farm. 
we do boarding and lessons and training. Okay. And how long have you been owning and, and running the, the farm? Since May of 21. Okay. Uh, you said for the, for the people in, in the jury or um, council, explain what a horse farm actually does. You said boarding and riding lessons, but what does that actually mean? Um, so people will own horses and um, they don't always have the means to uh, have them at their house, so they will board them over at my place. So I take care of them, I feed them, I water them, I clean up after them, and uh, then they can come visit their horses whenever they want. Okay, um, and so the boarding includes feeding and watering the horse, that's all one price. Yes, it also um, includes like cleaning up after them, but I mean really just any, any of the care that they, they might need for just general living. Okay, and how much is the cost of boarding one horse? Um, board at that time was uh, $400 for um, pasture board, so their horse is outside 24-7 with access to a shelter if they wanted to use it. Okay, 400 per horse. Yes. Okay. Um, what's not included in boarding? Um, vet bills, so if, you know, the vet has to come out and do something with the horse. Um, the farrier, <coughs> so the, the person Again, that works out with the feet. I'm sorry, <laughs> go ahead. It's basically kind of a pedicure for a horse, so that has to happen for six to eight weeks. Um, but, uh, and then also lessons, too. Lessons are not included, so those are separate. And how much are, how much are lessons? $35. And how much uh, for the vet bill, the, uh, a vet or a farrier? Um, it really just depends on um, the horse um, and then like what, what that horse needs. So, um, you know, a horse needs routine vaccinations each year and just kind of general checkup. Um, but there are other expenses as for like, you know, emergency vet calls. So if your horse injured themselves or is colicky. And the vet comes to the barn? Yes. Okay. Do you know someone named Jennifer Crumbly? I do. Do you see her in the courtroom today? I do. Can you um, describe something she's bringing to the court? Your farm, though, correct? Yes. All right. When, about what time, year, month? month? Um, they started boarding their uh, horses, which by then they had bought the second horse. Um, they had started boarding, I believe, in the July time period of um, 21. Okay. Who did you know better, James or Jennifer? Jennifer. All right. And um, can you describe Jennifer's general demeanor when you were working with her and well, back up. Let's, what kind of interactions would you have with Jennifer? And what, um, just talking about the horse that she was boarding, or was there anything else that you did um, with Jennifer? 
a majority of our conversations were related to the horses and maybe talking about goals for the future for possibly showing or just training goals in general to um, figure out the best plan of action for the lessons that I was giving. So did you give her lessons? I did. Okay, how, about how, how often would you give her a lesson? Um, I would say between two and three times a week. Okay, and when did that occur? Um, usually in the evenings. So, did Jennifer come to the, to the barn um, in the evenings during the weekdays, or was it on weekends, or both? Um, well, she came in the evenings during the week, usually after work, and then um, weekends, um, she would come in the morning, afternoon, and evening. But okay. I can't say for sure the exact time usually. And did you say how many times during the week, the work week? I would say probably at least two to three times during the week. And about on the average, what time would she arrive? Mm, about 4.30, 5-ish. Okay. And stay about how long, if you know? Um, a couple hours, so at least maybe two to three hours. And was that just getting lessons or were there other things that she was doing? Um, just getting her horse ready for a lesson and doing the lesson and then cooling the horse down and taking them back out to their pasture. Um, and then just everybody in, at the barn is pretty friendly. Everybody will talk. So just small conversation. So the, the boarding and the feeding is just the basic care. Is there a lot more, a lot more things you have to do to take care of a horse um, if you're the owner? Um, the owner... Uh, pays the barn where the horse is boarded at to do the general care of the horse, like the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. things, such as giving them water and grain and hay and cleaning up after them and so maybe changing blankets and different things to make sure that they, they stay warm. Um, so there's, um, there's a, <coughs> an exhibit which includes the Facebook messages between Jennifer and James. That, were they both taking care of the horses? And the reason I ask is there seems to be a lot of communication between the two of them about taking care of the horses. So I'm trying to get at what else would they be doing other than just feeding the horse and you said cooling it off and taking it. I'm not a, a horse person, so um, taking it out to pasture and does it have to be, do you have to ride your horses? Like what it, what's the responsibility there? Um, most likely what they might be talking about is maybe some of the vet care. So I know one of their horses had what's called mud fever, kind of a, a fungus stuff that might grow on the legs of a horse with wet weather. Um, and that usually is something that ends up needing a vet to intervene with just medication to help take care of it. So okay. it might be related to maybe the vet, vet bills. Okay. maybe just that appointments related to taking care of the horses. Okay, and you said they own two horses. What are their names? Uh, one is named Billy and one is named Shorty. Okay. What kind of horses were they in terms of value of the horses? There, I, I, I'm, I know horses can be very expensive to purchase. Was Where do, where do these horses fall on that continuum? Uh, well, they were both thoroughbreds, so they, they raced on the racetrack before they had gotten them. Um, but I do not know how much Shorty was purchased for. Um, I believe that um, Billy was purchased around like $5,000. Okay. And how do you know how much Billy was? Um, she was sending me, or Jennifer was sending me, um, information on him when she was looking for a horse. Okay, and do you know anything about the circumstances of when she or how she bought that horse? Um, I know that she was talking about it late at night and um, she was also drinking. Okay. How do the people that board your horses and, and have lessons, um, give you give lessons, how do they pay, pay you? Your Honor, I need to make an objection. The, the witness's answer was in part non-responsive, and I'd, I'd ask to be struck from the record. Yeah, it was, I think it was, uh, and unless there's follow-up, I think it was somewhat unresponsive. Uh, the Facebook message string that was just admitted details exactly how the course was purchased, so we can, I, I'm happy to, to move on and, and we'll deal with it then. 
Um, I don't know, I haven't read those. So. The portion I'm objecting to is the unnecessary information about she was drinking at the time. Okay. I think it's relevant. I think if you're buying a $5,000 hot horse um, while you were drinking late at night is relevant to the case and, and the relationship that Jennifer Crumbly had in her priorities. And, and as well as the fact that the Facebook message uh, string that was just stipulated to an admission without redactions, like, it just absolutely discusses that. Okay, next question. Thank you. Um, how do people pay? Cash, check, credit card? It can be any of those. Um, a lot of people now use online payments like Venmo. Okay. How did the Crumbly's pay you through our, your services? Uh, check. Okay. And did James ever take lessons? I have given him a few lessons. So who was taking the horse, taking care of the horse during the day? Was that, did Jennifer ever come during the day, during the week, or was it, was it James, or did they both? Um, well, the general care every day was done by the barn, um, but say if there was a need to have the vet out, um, we usually like to have the owners present, so um, they, they would usually have one of them at whatever vet appointment. Okay, so you just testified you, they moved their horses to your barn July of 2021, you knew them approximately a year before that, two years? Um, they had boarded at the barn that I had my horses boarded at um, prior to buying my farm. Um, I do not recall how much time we had boarded together there, um, but I had met them a couple years prior to okay, that. Okay, that's what I was getting at. Yep. So you you known them a couple years before they came to your farm? Yes. Okay. Um, did you know that if Jennifer had a son, uh, yes. And had, did you ever meet their son? I may have met him maybe once or twice. Where, if you know, where, where was that? Was that your barn? It was not at my barn. Okay. Um, did you ever see their son come to your barn? No, I did not. So the two to three times a week and on the weekend when Jennifer would visit, did she bring anybody with her? Usually James. Okay. Um, I don't remember anybody else really coming out and with her. Okay. Do you allow kids at the barn? Yes, we do. And what are the kids that are at the barn usually doing? Um, usually doing lessons. Um, you know, some, some of the kids that are doing lessons, they have siblings that are brought out, so they just kind of maybe occupy their time with the barn cats or um, seeing the other horses on the property. Okay. And do you have any family-oriented um, activities or get-togethers? Um, we have. Uh, we've had a family reunion. Meaning before, but parties or activities that children are welcome to come to. Yes. All of the um, events that we might have at the farm, um, kids are invited to. Like We've had parties like Halloween party before, too. Okay, around Halloween of 2021, do you remember if you had a Halloween party? Yes, we did. Do you know when it was and about what time of day it was? I do not remember what day it was, but I know that it was afternoon, evening-ish. Was it on Halloween or before Halloween? It was before Halloween. Okay, and it was a weekday or weeknight? It was a on a weekend, I believe. A Friday or Saturday? Yes. Okay. Um, did, did Jennifer come to that party? Yes. And how do you remember that? Um, I remember that uh, both Jennifer and James had come to the party um, and they were dressed up um, and like our, our parties we include the horses so people will also dress their horses up for they put Halloween, Halloween costumes on horses? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty fun. Okay. <laughs> and do you know if they dressed their horses up that year? Um, not really dressing them up. Um, they wanted to, but they had also said that they had another party to go to after. Okay. After mine. So you did not see their son that night? I did not. Okay. Um, did Jennifer talk to you about her son? Not a ton. 
Um, but every once in a while, she would mention something about him. And what, what if, do you remember things that she would say? Um, usually it was along the lines of um, she was having problems with him or he, he wasn't acting normal. He was, she had called him weird before. Um, she wanted him to do normal kid things. Okay. Um, but uh, she, I never remember her saying anything about like, you know, really bringing him out to the barn much or really doing much. I mean, they would go on vacations. I did hear about some vacations that they had gone on, um, but really there was not much talk about her son. Did she ever refer to him um, as, a, as a certain name? Did she speak negatively about him or was it just, or positively? There was nothing truly positive um, when she was talking about him. Um, there were quite a few times that um, she had uh, voiced that he was an oopsie baby. What does that mean? Um, I'm sorry, and what, asked, did you, what did you understand I, that to? Um, I understood it as just- Your objection as to speculation and also as to relevance. Well, I guess I wonder how it is. I think if you're referring to a, a teenager still as an oopsie baby, I think it's relevant to what kind of um, relationship you have with them and what kind of, um, you know, defense counsels described her client in opening as hyper vigilant, and um, and so I think that the prosecution's entitled to. Um, to well, there, well, I think their relationship is relevant, but you when you say your definition of an oopsie baby, did you, did. You, are you using your own definition of what that means or hers? Um, my take on what the feelings that I have gotten that she has um, not really talked your about. Your Honor, I, you're asking if it's her opinion. I'm sorry, she's going she to did, her no, opinion. I'll clear it up. We don't, okay. unfortunately, your feelings about it um, are right. not what's relevant. Correct. Here. But did she ever explain what that meant? Um, she never truly explained what that, that had meant. Okay. How long of a drive is the barn from Oxford, the village of Oxford, if you know? I would say about 20 minutes. Okay. Um, what is the way that you would communicate with Jennifer? Uh, usually through Facebook Messenger. And do you know why that is? Is that your the way you prefer to communicate? I don't really mind what what way to communicate. Um, it seems like Facebook Messenger is how a lot of people communicate nowadays. Okay. Does the barn have Wi-Fi? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. So do you have problems communicating for, um, when you're at the barn? It depends on how good the service wants to be at the barn. Okay. Um, some days it's really good, and then other days there's not great service. All right. And I would assume most of the people at the barn, that, that's just a, people deal with that and they know that. Yes. Okay. Um, would you describe Jennifer, did you have a friendship or was it more just business? It was mainly business. Um, we had friendly talk, but I would not say that we were close friends. Did, when you buy a horse and it doesn't, um, it, it's, it's, it's not near where you are, how do you get it from like a different state to the barn? Uh, usually you can pay somebody to haul the horse over to the new location for you or um, you can go pick it up if you have a trailer. And do you know how, what was the second horse's name that was purchased? Billy. Billy. Do you know how he was brought to the barn? He was shipped by someone that does a lot of um, cross-country hauling. And do you remember about what month and year that was? Uh, it was in the beginning of the year that she had gotten him, which I do not remember exactly when she had gotten him. Did she get him before she came to your barn or after? Before. Okay. But So how did you know she was, what was your relationship like then before she was at the barn? Before she was at my barn? Yes, your relationship. Um, I would give her some lessons, and it was mainly business. And was she asking 
for advice about which horse to buy or how to buy the horse? Not a lot, but just kind of, um, you know, just general questions of, you know, what, what might work for a good horse for what she wanted to do. Okay, I guess what horse. I'm getting is how do you know how the horse was shipped? Um, because she had told me about, um, you know, where, where he was, that he was in a different state, and that she would just have him shipped. Okay, do you, do you know approximately how much that costs? I do not. It varies on who you use to haul a horse, and then also just, you know, the, the cost of, you know, the fuel and mileage, and, you know, everybody kind of has their, their own fees that they... More than 500, less than 500? Um, most likely more than 500. Okay. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about the health concerns or issues with the two horses? Do they need a lot of extra care? Um, like, were they given a lot of extra care? Given extra care by the vet? By the crummies, by Jennifer. Um, they would um, come out and, uh, like, you know, the, the mud fever that we were dealing with, um, and they had put medication on, on Billy's legs for that. Um, but uh, there were some issues lameness wise with um, their their newest horse Billy that um, they had still had to have the vet out for to diagnose what the problem was. Were they on any other medications or supplements? Um, supplements, yes. Um, medication, not, <coughs> not that I know of. What's the cost of supplements for a horse? Um, well, it depends on what what you want to um, have your horse on. Um, I know that both Billy and Shorty were on a lot of supplements, and it probably cost over a hundred dollars, probably close to two hundred dollars per month per horse. All right, I'm gonna draw your attention to November 30th, 2021. Do you remember that day? Yes. All right. What was the interaction you had with Jennifer Crumbly uh, the, the day before that? So that, that was a Tuesday. Were you, did you see her at the barn on Monday? I do not remember. I think she was planning on coming out, but I don't remember exactly. Okay. Did you have any communication with her the, that previous weekend? The previous weekend before the 30th? Yes, after Thanksgiving. Yes. And do, do you remember what that was about? Um, I remember wanting to set up lessons. I don't don't remember exactly okay. anything else. In your Facebook communications, um, did Jennifer ever mention going to a, a shooting range that summer or leading up to that fall? Um, she had mentioned that she was going to, um, but I don't really remember a lot of okay. that. That was, was that in the summer or the fall? Uh, I would believe summer and, and fall. Okay. Um, Were you aware that she, um, do you follow her on social media? I do. Did you see the post that she uh, posted about buying her son a, a Christmas present? I did. All right. Did you discuss it with her? I did not. Did you see it before the shooting or after? I do not remember. I'm on social media, but not very frequent. Okay. Uh, so the morning of November 30th, uh, what was going on with their horses? Um, their horse, Billy, needed uh, the medication from the vet to help treat his mud fever because we couldn't fix it with the products that we were trying before and his legs were swollen. Okay, and what, what was being done about it? Um, there was some ointment that was given to them uh, by the vet to put on his legs. That morning? I believe they picked it up from the vet um, to put on the legs because I remember James wanting to bring the medication out and put it on uh, Billy's legs. Okay, so James, did James go to the barn that morning? Yes, he did. Okay. Um, and do you know from like what time to what time? It was in the morning, but I don't recall what time. 
Okay. And were you having conversations over Facebook Messenger with Jennifer during that time? About the event? Um, not really. Okay. Did you speak with her about this mud fever frequently? I had mentioned it to her because it's, it's not normal for a horse's legs to swell up like his did. Um, it's just a mild case of this mud fever. Um, so we had to have a little bit more involvement of getting that taken care of by having an ointment made by the vet to that um, took care of it. Okay. Um, was Jennifer <coughs> planning on coming to the barn <coughs> that night? Yes. And can you, do you remember why? Uh, we were going to do a lesson, a riding lesson. Did did she end up going to that lesson? She did not. Okay. Um, <coughs> there was a text sent at what's um, including in what's been previously admitted um, as exhibit 130, Your Honor. Um, can you read the, the top text there? And which one's which one is you? Are you blue or, or black? I am blue. Okay, so can you read the text that you sent at, what does it say, 10, 18 a.m. on the 30th? Yes. Um, boys are needing supplements for tonight, and Shori lost a bell boot again. What's a bell boot? Um, it is a, um, it's like a rubber boot that goes over the horse's foot to help um, prevent uh well, we used it on Shorty for, um, because he would rip his shoes off all the time. He had metal shoes on, and he would um, pull his shoes off. So if you put a bell boot on, it helps to reduce the chance of them pulling a shoe. Okay, and you're telling her why? Um, I was telling her to have her bring out another boot to replace the one that he had torn off. So, so it's her responsibility to do that? Correct. Okay, um, and she responds, can you read that text? Okay, I'll bring some out later. Just had to go to my son's school and meet his counselor. Shit day. All right, so she responds to you in about 20, 30 minutes. Yes. Okay. Like it. Okay. okay. Um, and then, is this continued on that same message? It's just another message at the same time? Or yes. was it later? Okay, can you read that? Yeah, I still plan on doing the lesson. Everything's okay. He's just having a hard time after losing Hank, his friend, going away to a treatment facility and who knows what else. But he was just caught drawing this on a math test or a math assignment today. All right. And this is the worksheet that's been previously submitted, Your Honor. It's Exhibit 74. Um, is there anything for that? He's doing that. You're up. Um, did Jennifer ever participate in any shows or competitions? She had done one show <clears throat> with us. And where was that? Um, at a farm right down the road. Okay. Do you know if she ever traveled to, for competitions or horse shows? Not to my knowledge outside of when I had taken the horse. Oh. May I approach your honor? So this is exhibit 74. And can you tell the jury what that is? That is the math test that Jennifer had sent me that morning um, of what her son had drawn on the math test. All right, and did you take a look, close look at it when she sent it to you? I did look at it, um, but I did not open it as soon as she had sent it to me. I saw it later. Okay, when? how, how much later? I believe that it was before um, the shooting had occurred, um, but after.
after the shooting had happened, I had looked at the map test even closer. Okay, so this, this is important, so I wanna make sure I ask the question in the right way. You, you, did, you know you took a look at it, um, and you remember that, is, is there a reason why? I remembered saying that he had needed horse therapy. And okay. She should bring him out for some horse therapy. All right. Okay. We're going to get to that. Um, can you skip to the next slide? Um, so this is from who? You or Jennifer? Um, this message was from Jennifer. Can you read it, please? As long as I can get out there early enough because I had to leave work for an hour and I have a meeting in Southfield at 3 o'clock, but I should be done with that by 4. I plan on being there, plus the vet said it's better for him to move around and keep it circulation going while he's dealing with mud fever. Good times. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out that you received from her about the lesson was 1058. <coughs> Do you remember? I... I'm sorry, yes, um, 1058, okay? Yes. And so this is all part of the same conversation? Yes. All right, and then the next text is from you, correct? Can you read that? Yes. OMG, he needs some horse therapy. I bet he would love Mo. Whatever works for you, just let me know. I only have Bella's lesson tonight at 5.30, so anytime after her lesson is fine. Okay, and her response? Okay, yeah, well, he'll be coming with me tonight. James is working and he can't be left alone. Next slide. Um, <laughs> does he want to ride? And she responds? I don't know, maybe brush a small horse so he's not. Um, oh, sorry, I had yeah. the same problem. No, I, I was trying to figure sorry. out if there was more to that, that message there, but it was down. Um, I don't know, maybe brush a small horse so he's not intimidated, LOL. And she responds? I responded, oh. uh, Mo would be perfect. And she responded with, okay. All right, and the next slide. Uh, make it a family event coming out to the barn. Really thought, it really though, I've seen <clears throat> some amazing things done with horses with kids. And at this point, you testified early, you, you hadn't ever seen him come to the barn? Not to my farm, and I vaguely remember maybe seeing him once at the previous farm. A few years prior? Uh, yes. Okay. And her response? Uh, he needs something. And you responded, even though there seems to be a... I can still read it. Okay. Let's, let's make him a cowboy. And, and then for response? LOL, mom goals for real. All right, so that exchange ends, and then the next text you get from her, her Facebook message is at 2.36 p.m. that day. Correct. <coughs> that says, here I will Okay, not hold on a second. Okay. What, um, when did you first hear about the shooting? Um, I had actually heard about the shooting when um, one of my students' moms had called me um, in that afternoon and said that they would not be out later for their lesson because of the shooting. All right, and what was your first thought, Kira? My first thought is that I knew who the shooter was by right. the math test that was sent to me. All right, that's a, a heavy thing to, to think. Talk to me about why that was your first thought. Um, it's not normal for somebody to draw these things on a test in school or even really think about these things, um, especially in a school setting, but really ever. Okay. So did you then go back and, and take another look at the worksheet? Yes. All right. Um, did you talk to anybody about this at the time? Um, I had talked to my parents. Um, I had told them that I believed that I knew who the shooter was, and I explained why. Okay. Um, and at some point, your, your father actually called the tip line, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, when did you verify that it was, in fact, her son? Around what time, if you know? 
Um, I do not remember when I had verified that it was her son. Okay, so let's go back to the text message at 2.36, and we know the, the shooting started at around 12.51. Uh, so this is a couple, this is an, an almost an hour and a half after the shooting. She texts you what? Kira, I won't be there tonight. And you respond? It's okay. Want me to work Billy for you? And she says? Yes, please. Okay, and talk to me about the next text and the picture. Um, it says, just brought him in, and it's a picture of Billy. All right. Did you text, text her photos or message her photos a lot on the horses? I would send her pictures as I, I took them. I tried to be good about taking pictures of the horses. Okay, and the next slide. <clears throat> this is at 4.07. I said, hey, is everything okay? I heard there was a shooting at Oxford High School. Is Ethan okay? And then at 421, you sent another text? Can you if you need anything, please let me know. And then under that, uh, oh no, that's the same okay. message that's up there. Uh, she responds at 442 and says what? I need to sell my, sell my horses staff. And what did you respond to her? I responded with, oh no, this was what I was worried about. Okay, can I stop you there? What did you mean by that? I had the, the feeling that, that her son was the shooter and that um, with that, the horses would, horses would most likely have to be sold. Okay, but it doesn't say that and you're, you came to that conclusion, oh no, this is what I was worried about because of somebody information outside of what she actually texted. Correct. Okay. Um, and you say what about the horses? Uh, I said, if you are serious, I will gladly buy Billy for sure. And? And <clears throat> then I asked how much, and she said, I paid 5K for him. Okay. About an hour and a half later, you respond? Oh, uh, no. She, she, no, 624, you say what? I had said, do you want 5K for him or do you want more? And her response? My head is spinning right now. Is eight too much? And she says? I said, say? I would gladly give you eight if I could afford it. I really only have 5K to spend. You could ask Angela if she would, be, if she would buy him for eight. Angela would probably buy him. Okay. Do you buy and sell horses a lot? I do not. Okay, have you bought a horse from somebody before? I have bought horses before. Okay, is that something that you normally do via check, cashier's check, cash? It it depends on the situation. You're okay. Um, I would just object to relevance. Your Honor, there's, it's, uh, this is part of a lot of evidence we're introducing about um, going to flight and the, the need for actual cash. I'm not, I'm not allowed. Thank you. Uh, so at 647, she texts, she messages you again. What does it say? I won't have my cell phone. And you respond? Do what you need to do. I will take good care of your boys here. And the next slide? She says what? I can be reached through here. I do not have my cell phone currently on a track phone. And that is still the 30th, but it's at 10.21 p.m. Yes. All right, and, and can you read what you responded? Um, do you need me to do anything for you? I'm not sure you should. paper copy that doesn't have that um, so prominent in it, so one moment. Okay, this, let's talk about this. Do you know um, where this, these, at some point did the, the law enforcement ask you if you communicated with Jennifer? Um, how do you mean that? At 
some point did did um, you give the screenshots of these messages to law enforcement? I did. Okay. Um, so part of the problem, these are screenshots. If, do you know, is that correct? Yes, they oh. are screenshots. Okay. Um, I'm going to approach with the actual paper copy to see if maybe this is a little easier to read. It's just cut off, so I guess just do the last Yeah. So the next uh, time you text her at 10.45, can you tell the jury what you said? I cannot believe people on Facebook. I'm so sorry you're having to deal with this stuff. Okay. And because I know this is going to be um, something counsel wants to talk to you about, can you tell us what was your, what were you feeling at that moment when this was going on about Jennifer and the whole situation? I was extremely upset about the situation. Okay. Can you give me a little more than extremely upset? Um, I didn't really know what, what to think. I couldn't believe that this had happened, and especially so close to, you know, home. Um, and I was concerned about what was going to happen in the future. Okay. With, um, just my farm in general. And you at the time were how old? Uh, that was don't two years ago. Two years ago, I was twenty-five. All right. Um, and were you feeling bad for Jennifer? I did not truly feel bad for Jennifer. I was upset that this had happened to all of all of the kids and families, and I wanted to figure out how I could possibly get more information to help make sure that um, things were taken care of. Okay, were there any students at Oxford that you gave lessons to or were at the bar, and what is the community like there? Um, yes, I, I give lessons to a few people from, from Oxford. Okay. Um, all right, the next slide. This is at 11 p.m. that night. Can you read your text? Did you guys leave the medication for Billy's legs? If not, no worries. I'll just put my stuff on him. And she responds, I'll bring by tomorrow. We're in hotel in Lapeer. News live at our house. And you respond? No problem. And then at 11 40, you say what? Please stay safe. Okay. Next slide. Uh, this is a screenshot um, that you sent or she sent? She had sent me. Okay, and she responded, I can't go home. Okay, and did you read those? Um, what I could, just from the, the screenshot. Okay, did you view those as threats to her life? I, Your Honor, I would object as to her opinion. Yes, the same. Okay, I, the, the text, the screenshot speaks for itself. Um, next slide. 
Okay, go ahead. I'm concerned for you guys. Um, you should stay. All right, um, while we're getting a, a copy that actually is clear, uh, why are you concerned? Um, I, why were you concerned? This my my concern um, was more for the safety of myself and the people at my farm. Um, and here in that concern, I am um, showing sympathy to hopefully figure out um, maybe more information on like, you know, what, what is going to happen if they're going to try to come to my farm or um, if people are going to show up. What was, what was the concern? I, my concern about them coming to the farm, um, knowing about the situation that had just happened is that they may steal things to sell to get money to pay for the... Your Honor, um, I would object to this um, about her thoughts and feelings about stealing. This is irrelevant and prejudicial. Yeah, she's a fact witness as for facts and fact question. Your Honor, she is most likely going to be asked by counsel to explain that she was worried about her safety, and so I'm asking her what she was really worried about. I, I'm happy to save it on to redirect them. Okay. Okay. Um, and then she responds what? I have my pets at home. I'm sorry, I don't want to put anyone at risk. I don't know what to do. Okay, her pets at home. Did you know anything about her pets? I know that she had a dog, at least still, and I think she had a cat. Okay. And this was still the night of the shooting? Yes. And in fact, this is at 11.59 p.m. after she says, I'm concerned about my pets. What do you respond? Best thing you can do is just be honest about things. I'm not sure, I'm wondering about even buying your horses, if that would drag me into this, or if you just sign them over to me. Okay, and then there's content we have to um, clear up, but can you read the last sentence? Or the two last sentences? Uh, two last <coughs> sentences. Um, I see people saying you're using money from the horses to get a better lawyer or something. People are ridiculous. All right. Next slide. I'm selling my house, too. Lawyer will cost every bit of 200000 and I don't think that, I think it will be questioned. You won't get dragged in. And then I have mm -hmm. responded with, um, Safe well, to say you might have been worried it would be called to testify on a high. Yeah. Okay, what is your. Um, most I can afford to pay is 5K. Farrier is coming out Thursday also. And she responds? That's fine, sold. Okay. And then she had said, I'll sign Jordy over to you. All right, next slide. Okay, want to sign them over tomorrow? I can either write personal check or I can get go get money order. I'm not sure I have the cash on me. Can see if they'll let me withdraw that much. So do you keep that kind of cash at the barn with you? No, All right. I do not. All right. Um, and her response? I'm bawling right now, Kira. My son ruined so many lives today. Okay, so is... Is this all the 11.59, that whole string, if you know? I do Can not look on know. The paper it's copy? Right, right around in that, that time. Um, there is no time on... Do you see the time? There is no no time in those messages. The um, the last time it shows where the time. Okay, look, was. let's move on. Okay. Um, the next, her she says, "I'm dolling. My son ruined so many lives today." And the next slide. Um. Then 
I so wish I could help you out more. I am still in shock too. Take it one day at a time. Be honest about everything. It should help you guys through this. Um, and then you say, if you guys need anything, and I'll do what I can for you, and I'll take good care of the boys. Who are you talking about? I am talking about both of their horses. Okay. She responds. I know you will. And then your response? Try to rest some. You'll need it. We can talk more tomorrow about the boys. And she says what? Okay, thanks for not judging, unlike the whole world. Okay, next slide. Um, I know you and James, and this doesn't even remotely make me think that it's your fault. It sounds like Ethan was a trouble kid. It's unfortunate this happened, because he did ruin a lot of... Um, and... And I, What's that? Can you read the last few sentences? Uh, yeah, the last few sentences of that um, that message says, "Who knows? Try to stay calm, as calm as and collected as you can." Okay, I'm going to approach. This is the another copy, so you don't have to struggle with the. Okay. Um, We're going to put up on the screen um, a better copy so that you don't have to sort of guess what you said in between sentences. Um, so, um, one moment. So we've been over this. This is at, we'll start at 10.45. Uh, um, can you go to scroll down? Okay. Scroll down. Okay, go back. So. All right, can you read that full um, message up from 11.44, the night of the shooting, that, that you, you wrote in blue? Uh, I'm concerned for you guys. You should stay where you are. I'm concerned for you even coming out here. I don't want people finding out about your horses or hurting you while you are here. Okay. And she responds? I have my pets at home. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. I don't want to put anyone at risk. I don't know what to do. And you respond again rereading this because there's a line missing. Go ahead. Best thing you can do is just be honest about things. I'm not sure. I'm wondering about even buying your horses, if that would drag me into this, or if you just sign them over to me, if that would be better for both of us. I could see people saying you're using money from the horses to get a better lawyer or something. People are ridiculous. Okay. And she responds, I'm selling entered this, um, uh, it's going to cost everybody $200,000, and I don't think it will be questioned. You shouldn't get dragged in. And then again, you, you, we've read these texts. You said you don't have $5,000, uh, or that's the most you can afford to pay. It's going down. Um, 
she agrees to that and you you tell her you don't know if you can withdraw five thousand dollars correct correct all right all right, can you read that text again in the blue that you sent her now that it's complete? Um, I so wish I could help you out more. I am still in shock, too. Take it one day at a time. Be honest about everything. It should help you guys through this. Please let me know if you guys need anything, and I'll do what I can for you. I'll take good care of the boys. And she responds, I know you well. You say, try to get some rest. We can talk more tomorrow about the boys. And she says, okay, thanks for not judging us, unlike the whole world. So what time is this? This is now the next day at 12.28 a.m.? Yes. All right. Um, and go ahead and read that entire text. That, that you're, so you're texting her into the early hours. Yes. Correct? Okay, go ahead. Um, I know you and James and this doesn't even remotely make me think it's your fault. It sounds like Ethan was a troubled kid. It's unfortunate this happened because he did ruin a lot of lives around him and his own. Everything will work out how it's supposed to. I feel everything happens for a reason. Maybe this happened to raise awareness. Who knows? Try to stay calm and collected as you can. And then um, you, you had an amazing ride on Billy. Yes. Okay, and how does Jennifer respond? I wish we had warnings, something. He's a good kid that made a terrible decision. I'm glad Billy, good, kills me to sell him. Um, okay. I, uh, did you know what she was talking about? Um, she was talking about um, not having Your Honor, I would object to this witness's opinion. The texts speak for themselves. I, I'm not asking her an opinion, Judge. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to ask her if there was any um, The else. topic of the conversation? Yes. Um, did she, what I'm trying to ask, Judge, is did she have any context for, for this at, about warnings? Okay. Yeah, she'd have Without to have, saying what... She'd have to have personal knowledge. Right. That's, I was trying to get to that, actually. Um, did you have any um, information from before she sent you the text about warnings about what that would, what that meant, not just what you perceived it as, but did you have any information she had provided earlier about warnings? Um, just information of um, not really talking about about her her child much, and that he was troubled. Okay. So you you don't know other than the worksheet yeah. she she texted you. Did you that that day? Did she say anything about warnings? No, she okay. did not. All right, and, and you respond? Uh, there probably were warnings, but nobody saw them. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. I absolutely adore Billy. Okay, and the next? A lot of people have found out, I guess, Ethan is all over Facebook. People at the barn are concerned. I think it would be best if you didn't come out to the barn. Or if you do, just you must be escorted by the police. I'm really sorry. I'm looking out for my business here, too. All right, and what were you, you testified earlier you were worried about theft, but what were you worried about? Is there anything else that you were worried about at that point? Um, I was also worried about just the, the safety of my other boarders. Um, you know, I, I do have people that I give lessons to that do go to Oxford and um, they they did not want to be around if um, Jennifer and James would come to the farm. Okay, and she responds to you, this is then the next day after the shooting, it's around 9.56 a.m. What does she respond? Seriously, those horses are the only thing that is good in my life right now. And I responded with, I 100% understand that, but we all need to be careful. What if people follow you here? Okay, um, the next uh, messages indicate um, that it says Kira missed your call. Uh, is there a way to call through a Facebook messenger that doesn't include, that's not a cell phone call? Are those two different things if you know? Yes. Okay. 
And do you had you received Facebook calls from Jennifer before? She has attempted to call okay. Facebook before. And you didn't pick up? I did not. Is there a reason for that? I do not remember what I was doing at that time. Okay, and the next uh, message? Call me on Facebook, on track phone me to talk and figure some things out. And what is your response? Sorry, I missed your call. I'm still doing <coughs> some stuff and can't do a phone call until later on. And then you say, can you message me and, and oh, yeah. communicate that way? Correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, next message? She says what? Uh, let's talk later, easier than texting. The phone is hard to text on. And now your response is, now this is three o'clock, the day after the shooting, you respond what? <clears throat> All right, no problem, I'll let you know later today. And then you text her again that night at eight, around 8 p.m.? If you're comfortable coming out here without police, I'm okay with it too. We just need to be careful. I don't want people to follow you or hurt you. Okay, Kira, it, it, it seems as if you're changing your mind here and you're not exactly sure how to handle it. What's going on with that text? Because that's opposite of what you said earlier. Your Honor, I would object to the narrative being provided by the prosecution and ask that she just ask questions. Okay, well, I, th I, think, she, I think she is. She's, uh, she's asking, did you change your mind? I had changed my mind to allow her to come to the farm, but in my head, if she did decide to come to the farm, um, I would still have, um, like, you know, my parents were there and just making sure that things were still safe. Okay, and were you continuing to talk to other people like your parents during this time about what to do, or were you pretty set? I, I had talked to my, my parents. Okay. Um, what is her response shortly after that? That's still 8, 12 p.m. Um, we're out of the area for a few days in a safe place until we have a better grasp on everything. Okay, and the next message you send? I am very glad you are safe. I care about you guys. I will take care of your boys. Let me know when you want me to buy them and I'll buy them. And then you also add if you need anything else, could just let me know? Yes. All right. And the next message she sends is about an hour or so later at 9 p.m. And what did she say? I'm sorry, my keyboard sucks. Let's plan on Monday to sale. Okay. And at this time, December 1st would be a Wednesday. Yeah. If you know. I think. <laughs> I, I'm not good with dates. Okay. Uh, and so Monday is four or five days later? Yes. Okay. And then you respond, okay, sounds good. Is there a way for me to get the medication for his legs before then? Were you talking about Billy? I was talking about Billy okay. because he had the medication that was being used to treat his mud fever. The mud fever? Yes. All right. And then the, she responds, um, what's your number? I want to call and set up a safe place to meet. My messenger is probably being monitored. And okay. She's telling you at 9.30 on Wednesday night, my messenger is probably being monitored. What did you take that to mean? What what messenger? Um, she is referring to the Facebook messenger. So you monitored meaning that the messages you're sending are being monitored? Correct. Did you know who was monitoring them? I did not. Okay. And then you. she says what? Um... She says, hey, we need to get that stuff to you okay. and discuss the horses. Okay, so this is the very this is the following day at 12.49. Uh, she says, we need to get that stuff and discuss the horses. And how do you respond? Um, my response. <coughs> um, Who's Truman? Truman is our farrier that we use. Your what? My, our farrier. Okay, were Billy and Shorty having a farrier visit? Um, yes. Okay, and that was arranged by who? Uh, me. I, all the horses get done at the same time. Okay, so you say Truman's here right now, I can let you know when he's done, and you say I'll message you when I'm done. Yes. Okay, and then? Uh, said, hey, I'm sorry, can we do call tomorrow morning? 
Okay. Were you trying to avoid a conversation or you were just busy? Both. Okay. <laughs> Fair. All right. Um, and the next message comes in uh, December 2nd. Yep. Can we still sell the horses tomorrow? Yeah. And you respond, this is at 10 56 p.m. You respond what? I think so. Want me to have cash or check? And how does she respond? Cash is best. And you respond what? Um, what do you want to do with your tack? And what's tack? Um, like the saddles and bridles for the okay. horses. And you, she says sell it? Yes. Okay, now this is December 3rd at 7.19 a.m., correct? Yeah. Is that what it says? That's um, that message on there. Okay, that's UTC minus 5, so... That is the actual time, at 7.19 a.m., and that is yep. December 3rd, and you respond what? Um, I can probably give you 800 for it all if you want. Are you able to meet today still? Okay, and that is the, do you know if that was Friday? I do not remember. Okay, no worries. And uh, her response is what? Um, her response was maybe they're announcing charges at 12, so not sure what's happening. Okay. So that is, if I told you that was a Friday, do you have every reason to, to disagree with that? Um, December 3rd. I, I do not know the actual date that day. Okay. So, so uh, do you know what she's talking about? Mm -hmm. Charges? Did you have any clue as to what that was about? Just yes or no? Um, yes. Okay. From Jennifer or from another source? Um, news. Okay. And you respond um, at 11 a.m. shortly, about 45 minutes after. Just let me know and we can figure something out. Do you have the papers for the boys? Do you, is that like ownership papers? Uh, registration papers because gotcha. both of the horses are registered. And then you follow up saying what? Um, if you will take $5,800 for horses and all the tax and stuff included, I'll go get the money um, today. So I have it ready when you are ready. Okay, and she responds, yes, and Brian will contact you. Papers are at my house. Um, Brian's a mutual friend that you both know? Uh, we both know him. Okay, um, that's Jennifer's right. closer okay. to him than I am. Thank you. And... Um, you respond, did you find a place for your other animals? Were you talking about her pets at home? Yes. Okay. Um, and she says, not yet. This is at 2 p.m. And then you respond, I can find them good homes with my family members if you want. And that's around 2 p.m. as well. Is that the last converse, uh, message you sent or had exchanged with um, her? I do not know if that's the last time that I talked to her with this. Okay. You, did you give all of the messages um, on that day the screenshots to law enforcement that you had? I did, yes. Okay. Um, where are the, what happened to the horses? Did, did she end up, did you buy them? Uh, I did not buy them. They were actually signed over to me. Um, part of our boarding contract is if payment um, is not made after a certain number of days or months, um, then the horses become the property of the facility to um, cover the cost of having them boarded. Okay, and you were making those arrangements with somebody else other than Jennifer? Jennifer's dad. Okay, all right. Uh, nothing further at this time. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon, or morning, good morning. Um, my name is Shannon Smith, I represent Mrs. Crumbley. I believe that I've met you once before uh, when you testified in court at the preliminary exam. Do you recall that? I do. If I ask you any questions that are at all confusing, can you please stop me and let me know? I will. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to start off by talking about your relationship with Jennifer Crumbly. You testified today that you had a business relationship with her. Is that correct? 
it was a business relationship, but also a friendship, but we were not super close friends. Okay, so you would agree that at the time, prior to November 30th of 2021, Jennifer Crumbly was also a friend to you. Not particularly close, but a friend. Correct. And the farm that you own, do you call it a farm or a barn? It's both. Okay. I keep using the word interchangeably, so I thought yep, I'd ask. Yep, either works. The property you own is approximately 51 acres, is that correct? Correct. And it's fair to say that to get to your property, there are long roads in a very rural area, is that correct? Yes. So you don't, your farm is not right up against uh, cities or areas with a lot of traffic, correct? Correct. On those roads that are close to the farm, it's fair to say the cell signal cuts in and out um, for, for different cell phones. Correct. And you personally, at the time all of this took place, had a phone through Verizon Wireless, correct? Correct. And you would be able to use your Verizon phone while at the farm? For the most part, depending on the area and also just the day. So there were some parts of the farm or parts of the day where you would also have trouble getting a signal to make phone calls or send text messages, correct? Correct. And you know from the other people who board and come to the farm that other people also have internet issues and are unable to receive calls and texts while at the barn. Yes, sometimes people would struggle with that. It sounds like there's one little area by a picnic table where people kind of flack if they want to check their texts or get data. Is that correct? It very well could be there are a couple areas that seem to maybe be a little bit more reliable service-wise, but even then, like sometimes if it's too windy, things don't work. Now, you testified that um, Jennifer Crumbly gave you information that um, her son was weird, although she talked about vacations and some other things with him. Is that true? Correct. And you testified that you had concerns about her son um, prior to the events that unfolded on November 30th, correct? I have not voiced to her that um, I had seen concerns, but in my mind, I had thought that you know some of the things that she had described or um, how she didn't really talk about him much, or if you know when she had um, talked about him, um, it was very vague, like. Um, people like to talk about their their children, and she did not talk about Margaret, her just, children. Um, one moment, and the some whatever's on the screen oh. is not an exhibit, and so can I we, just can we do I just go ahead and turn this off? It's the button on the picture. The button for it to go in here. Should I just pull my plug out? I don't know. Is this yours? Or yes. Is this yours? Yeah, this is my oh. laptop. It oh. was. I didn't realize it was turned on to my laptop, so. My desktop was evidently up there. Okay, so um, Mrs. Or, I'm sorry, Ms. Penick, when you um, so you've testified obviously here today, but you recall testifying at a preliminary exam um, that took place back in 2022, correct? Yes. And on the day you testified in 2022 at the preliminary exam, you did the same thing we saw here in court. You raised your right hand and swore to tell the truth, correct? Correct. And on that date, you did your best to take the stand and tell the truth about, about your knowledge of the information in this case. Correct. Now, on that date, when you testified, you were specifically asked, 
Have you ever been given reason to believe he was not mentally sound, that he needed professional, you know, medical help? And your answer was no on that occasion. Correct? Correct. You were also asked, have you ever had reason to believe the shooter was homicidal or he would hurt other people? And your answer was no. Correct? Correct. Now, today you testified that the shooter, you were told about issues related to the shooter and him being weird, correct? Correct. You testified about that issue at the preliminary exam, and I'm on page 55, um, and you were asked, when you I said that- Objection, Your Honor, I, you're on page 55 of what? The preliminary exam. So the, um, the witness doesn't have that, and I think she, that's not, she doesn't have it. This is impeachment. Right, but she's referencing a page number to something that, that nobody else Oh, I think she's, she's re referencing the page number so that you know where she is. Right. In the exhibit okay, it, it's not an exhibit, so I'm just wondering if if we're going to refer to certain things that she said that that she'd be allowed to also see that before she answers. Well, I, I think she said, if she, if she doesn't remember, if she doesn't recall, right? Otherwise, with impeachment, I don't need to put the... Yeah, yeah, so ask her if she recalls being asked a certain question. Okay. Um, at the preliminary exam, um, you testified about whether James and Jen had issues with their son. Do you recall that? I recall. And on that date, you said, I had never gotten the feeling that Jen and James had those types of issues with their son, correct? Correct. I did and not know if there were specific issues as they had never told me flat out that there were issues, but just some of their their behaviors that um, they were comments that they had made, indirect comments, um, made me think that there may have been issues at some point. So it's your testimony today that you thought there may have been issues, but when you were asked under oath and testified, in 2022, you specifically said, I had never gotten the feeling that Jen and James had those types of issues with their son. I did not know. I don't have any paper proof or documentations of conversations to know for sure, so they're just my feelings. Okay, that's, I'm not asking if you have documentations or proof. I am just saying that on that date in 2022, which was closer in time to the events in this case, your testimony, sworn testimony, was that James and Jen did not have those issues with their son, correct? Correct. Now, when the math drawing was sent over to you by Mrs. Crumbly. The math paper her son wrote on, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. You saw, you ultimately saw that math paper and you would agree with me that Jennifer appeared very concerned about what was going on, correct? She had stated that she was concerned. Okay. So she sends you the math paper and says, expresses concern. Yes. Now, you testified that when you heard there was a shooting at Oxford High School, you knew who the shooter was, correct? My feeling with the information that I was given before I had actually seen it on the news is who the shooter actually was. I had my, my feelings about who the shooter was. So you, okay, you did not believe that the shooter would have committed a school shooting based on the math paper alone, correct? I do not know for sure. If you thought, if you saw that math paper and thought there would be a school shooting, you would have told someone, 
correct. I cannot predict the future that there would have been a shooting, but I was very concerned about the sheet, the math test that was sent to me. And I, I did talk to my parents about the, the math test that I was shown. And my understanding is that um, with Jennifer and James meeting with the school that this was discussed. Okay, we can agree that after the meeting about the math paper, Jennifer was concerned. We already went through that, yes? Yes. We can agree that you, she sent you a picture of the math paper and you also felt concerned, correct? Correct. And we can agree that you did not call law enforcement <coughs> or police to say, hey, I think a school shooting is going to unfold, correct? Correct. At the time you saw the math paper and were concerned, you would have stopped a school shooting if you predicted it was going to happen, correct? I would not have known that something like this would have happened. You wouldn't have thought something like this would happen, correct? Correct. What ended up happening was horrible, correct? Correct. And it was not anything that you expected even, correct? Correct. So when you are telling the jury that you hear about the shooting and you're thinking about the math paper, you know it's at Oxford High School, your testimony was you had an idea of who the shooter was, correct? Correct. In order to reach that conclusion at that time, you had to rely on hindsight looking backwards at things that you believed supported Jennifer's son may be the shooter, correct? Yes, the only thing that I, the thing that made me believe that I knew who the shooter was was realizing the, the math test that was sent to me that morning. Right. So after so the shooting happened, I, I had a feeling of who the shooter was because of the math test that was sent to me that morning. Okay, so it's looking backwards, connecting the dots of things you see that were of concern and knowing the shooting happened, that helps you put it together who the shooter is. Correct. But again, if you saw that math paper and had known or had a crystal ball and knew the shooting was gonna unfold, you would have certainly called police or done something to stop it. Absolutely. You, you also would have said to Mrs. Crumbly, hey, I think your son is gonna do something to hurt people, correct? Correct. Or, hey, I think your son might do something to hurt himself. Correct. And it's fair to say that you did not send Mrs. Crumbly messages along those lines. Correct. Now, you testified that you were being kind to Mrs. Crumbly. I don't believe you used the word being kind, but I, I characterize it as kind. When you said to her, I'm so sorry, you have to deal with this, uh, text messages along those lines that have been admitted, correct? Correct. And you are aware that Mrs. Crumbly from the text messages was saying she can't go home and you were expressing concern for her in response to her saying, I can't go home? Correct. We can agree there was a strong public opinion against the Crumbleys that you were aware of. Correct. Many people were very angry with the Crumbly parents when they knew the Crumbly parents were the parents of the shooter. Correct. So one of Mrs. Crumbly's concerns that was discussed in these texts um, with you were for her safety and the safety of her husband. Correct. And that poured over onto you as well. As the barn owner, you needed to be concerned about your affiliation with the Crumbly's. Correct. 
And you needed to be concerned to make sure that you were not specifically harmed by anyone for being affiliated with them, correct? I wanted to make sure that myself, my family, and my barn family were also safe. Well, that was going to be my next question. You were concerned about yourself, and I'm sorry, you said your family? My close family, and then also what we call a barn family, or people that are boarded at my facility. Thank you. And that's why you made indications to Mrs. Crumbly um, about not coming to the barn or only coming with a police ex escort because you were watching out for what you needed to protect, which is yourself, the people you care about, and your borders. Correct. When you write to Mrs. Crumbly in the text that were admitted, please stay safe, um, you genuinely wanted Mrs. Crumbly to stay safe. Correct. And Mrs. Crumbly was explaining that she can't go home. Those texts speak for themselves. Correct. And Mrs. Crumbly ultimately says um, that they are, are staying out of town for a few days. Correct. And it's your understanding they were not they were not returning back to their home address. Correct. In the text, you say to Mrs. Crumbly, you give her some advice to be honest about everything, correct? Correct. At no point, there is no point where Mrs. Crumbly says to you, hey, I'm gonna lie about this, correct? Correct. There's no point where she says, Kara, please take my side and lie about what anything, correct? Correct. When you're giving her the advice to tell the truth, she's not saying to you, I'm not planning to do that, right? Correct. And in your texts, you confirm to Mrs. Crumbly that you don't remotely think it's Jen and James' fault that the shooter did this, correct? I did put that in the text message, correct. And then Mrs. Crumbly responds that she wishes there had been warnings, correct? Correct. And when you text her back, you say there probably were, but nobody saw them, right? I did have that in my message, correct. And if you had seen warnings that the shooter would do something like he did, you certainly would have voiced that to Mrs. Crumbly. Your Honor, I believe she's been asked that question a couple of times. Well, I guess, I guess she, I think she asked if you saw that uh, picture in People 74, would you have call, called the police and said there's a mass shooting, there's gonna be a mass shooting. So I, I think the question is somewhat different. I, I believe she also asked her if you would have said something to Mrs. Crumbly on concern. Did, did she ask you that already? Yes, a variation. I did ask that, but then further down in the text messages, the conversation shifts, and the conversation is specifically, again, about signs and warnings, and so that's why I'm asking this witness a question about it again, okay. only because it reappears. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So you never said to Jennifer Crumbly when you two were discussing the word warnings, hey, I think there were warnings, correct? Can you rephrase that? You did not say to Mrs. Crumbly when you guys were talking about her wishing there were warnings, you didn't say, Jennifer, there were warnings. I, that is correct, because I... That's just my question. Okay. You did not say, Jennifer, there were warnings. Correct. And in fact, you continued to go on to be kind to Mrs. Crumbly and continue working out the terms of buying this horse, correct? Correct. And you continued to be concerned and telling Mrs. Crumbly, uh, stay where you are, in that you didn't want people hurting them, correct? Correct. When Mrs. Crumley was commenting to you about a lawyer costing $200,000, um, 
you understood she was trying to gather money together to pay a lawyer, retain a lawyer. Correct. And at that point, the shooting by the shooter had taken place, correct? Correct. And you do not know who the lawyer was for that Mrs. Crumbly was going to be thinking about paying $200,000 to, correct? I did not know for sure. <coughs> May I have one moment, Your Honor? Sure. Um, Ms. Penick, in light of your uh, testimony, I just want to confirm, you have never suspected that Jennifer Crumbly has stolen anything from you, correct? No. You've never filed a police report or made that kind of claim to Mrs. Crumbly or anyone, correct? No. Thank you. Right here. Did you have any trouble receiving and sending Facebook messages that day when you, in the thread that I had you read? Um, I do not remember. Okay, but you successfully communicated with her? Correct. Okay. Um, counsel asked you a couple times about text messages you sent Jennifer and you wanted to explain. You said, uh, that's what I wrote in the text. And you, what, what, what do you mean when you say that? Um, um, a lot of the messages that I had sent I wanted to send them in a way that I could possibly gain more information to provide to the law and um, get this situation taken care of. Okay. Do you did you have any other concerns about being in a confrontation or a fight? Not directly with them. Okay. Um, and she just asked you about concerns about theft. Um, and you said, no, you didn't prior to this, so why were you concerned about it now? I was concerned because when um, somebody needs a lot of money and then they're in a tight spot um, with something like this case, that um, they may do things that they may not have ever thought about doing, and one of those things was stealing things to sell for money to cover the expenses of things that might need to be covered. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. May she be excused? Yeah, you can step down. Can you excuse? Um, who is the next witness and what would their duration and scene be if we know all the Mr. Hopkins, it won't be, we won't finish before huh. lunch if that's what the court happens. Are you guys, are you guys good? I we waited a long time this morning. Can we call another witness and then I think your lunch will be here at 12 ish. We'll start another witness. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay.
No, 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 oh, no okay. not at all. We're, wait, oh, we're waiting for okay. Mr. Hopkins is being escorted here. So. Okay. Yeah. Could you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm your testimony about to give us the truth to help you back? I do. Okay, please be seated. And then would you state your name for that one and spell your first and last name? Sean Hopkins, S H A W N, last name H O P K I N S. May I judge? Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Sir. Did you work with the Oxford High School in November of 2021? I did. Okay. And what did you do there? I was a counselor at the high school. Okay. Do you still work with Oxford School District? I am currently on leave through the end of the school year. Okay. So you said you were a counselor. What exactly does that mean? As a counselor, I oversaw my caseload of students. Um, I had approximately 400 students while at Oxford High School. Um, I helped them with post-secondary planning, um, scheduling. I help them also uh, with social emotional issues and really um, kind of working with them holistically throughout their time in school. Okay, so you said you had about 400 students in your case though, is that right? That is correct. Okay, so how many students, if you know, attended Oxford High School in November of 2021? I believe it was around <coughs> either 1750, 1800. Okay, so how many counselors were there? There were four um, counselors with main caseloads, and then we had a counselor who had early college students. Okay. So the four, uh, you call the main counselors, would they have a similar type of caseload? Yeah, we were divided out alphabetically, um, so we each took about an equal amount of students. Okay. So you described a few different duties. Did you have any primary responsibilities as a counselor, or did you sort of have a lot of different responsibilities? I would call it a lot of different responsibilities that were all primary. Okay. Um, I don't know that there was one that we would put above the other that I described. So in your, your general caseload, did you have regular meetings with students or was it as an as-needed basis? Both, actually. We did have a couple meetings per year that were scheduled, especially with seniors. We would meet with them regularly and then we would meet once per year um, to go over scheduling and um, making sure that students were getting everything they needed for graduation and then at an as-needed basis for any students. Okay. So tell me about your background, please. Well, uh, I graduated from college in 2009, actually started as a youth pastor, um, worked in that role for, um, from 2009 to uh, 2018. I actually crossed over some uh, with my time in the schools. I graduated with a master's in counseling from Oakland University in 2015, served the 2014-2015 school year as an intern at Oxford High School, and then was hired on um, full-time after that. Okay, 
is that where you had been employed up until from that point up until the time you went on leave? Uh, no, I was at Oxford Bridges High School for the 2022-23 school year. Okay, well, what is that? That's the alternative high school within the Oxford School District for students who are credit deficient and at risk for graduation because of their credits. Okay, thank you. So, did any of your responsibilities as a counselor at the high school involve discipline student, disciplining students? They did not. Okay, so who would handle that? That would have been the dean or our principals. Okay. So, November of 2021, Oxford High School, at that point, um, were students still masked? They were. Okay. Was it in-person learning, or was it hybrid, or was it remote? It was primarily in person. We did have times when we were unable to stay in person due to amount of students out with uh, COVID tracing. Okay, so it was in person whenever possible. That'd be yes. correct. Okay. Now, what sort of issues would arise with the students in your caseload in the fall of 2021? It was a difficult time. Um, looking back on it, it was a time when you know it it was a lot unknown for students, especially if they would be. Quarantined at times, um, you were working with them, making sure they were able to stay caught up. Um, we actually had teachers filming their class as they were teaching their class, oftentimes, to make sure that they were able to keep students engaged even when they were out. Um, so it was, it was difficult from a scholastic standpoint, which in a lot of ways led to it becoming difficult from the emotional standpoint for students, where it just became the unknown can be difficult sometimes. Um, what sort of mental health struggles would you see around that time? We saw a lot of depression, anxiety, um, students struggling, um, and we saw suicide ideation and unfortunately suicide attempts during that time. Tell us please what exactly does suicide ideation mean? It's a difficult one to define for a lot of people, but really what suicide ideation is are themes or things which may be related to suicide. Um, so we could see sadness, which in itself isn't suicidal, or we could see depression, which in itself isn't suicidal. But when we see these themes together, sometimes they can be linked with suicide. Okay. In November of 2021, as well as the previous school year, was Jennifer Crumbly's son one of the students assigned to your caseload? He was. Okay. <clears throat> when would have been the first time you interacted with Jennifer Crumbly's son? To my memory, the first time would have been in the fall of the 2021 school year. Okay. So what purpose would you have interacted with him then? You would have been a freshman at the high school? Well, I know, I do know that there have been things I interacted with him as a freshman, but I don't have memory of those. Um, we would have done scheduling, we would have done just normal routine things, but I don't have a memory of that. So we see, when you say scheduling, you mean scheduling classes? Yeah. Okay, so that was one of your responsibilities as well? It was. Okay. Now first of all, is Jennifer currently in the courtroom today? Uh, yes, she is. Can you point here and describe something she's wearing today, please? Uh, she is to my right, uh, wearing a black uh, jacket. Uh, with the record reflect identification? The record would reflect the court identification of the defendant Jennifer Crumley. So in the defendant's son's freshman year, that's the fall of 2020 into um, early parts of 21, do you have any recollection of interacting with, with him? I don't. Okay. Now, did you interact with him in the, um, if I showed you an email, would it refresh your recollection if you met with him in the spring of 2021? I have seen this email. Um, I don't have memory of the meeting, but it, it's been documented. Okay. This is exhibit, I don't believe we have an objection to, let's see if it's 155 through 160. I'm sorry, let me just double check here. That's correct, 155 through 160. You don't have an objection to any of those? No. Okay, 155 through 160 are admitted. Mr. Hopkins, I'm gonna direct you to the screen right in front of you. This is exhibit 155, portions obviously are redacted. This is a copy of an email, is that correct? It is. Okay, it's sent from a staff member of Oxford High School? Mm-hmm. You yes. have to say yes or no? Yes. Okay, and can you tell us please, it was addressed to you May 13, 2021, 1.46 p.m.? That is correct. Okay, what does the email say? It says, hi, when you get a chance, can you call Redacted down and see how he's doing? He's failing my class and tries to sleep all the time in class. Okay, so this was in reference to the defendant's son? 
That is correct. This is a portion of the same email thread, also May 13, 2021. This is 2.07 p.m. And what was your response? It says, I'll catch him before the end of the day. Okay. And then did that staff member respond to you? Yes. And what was that? Thanks. Just a little worried. Okay. Now, do you recall having a conversation with the defendant's son in May of 2021? I do not recall this meeting. Um, I'm going to show you what's been admitted as People's 156. Mm -hmm. This is, it's, remember, yes, yes or no? Yes. Okay. September the 8th, 2021, 8.23 a.m. This is an email from a different teacher to you. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. And could you read us, please, what the email says? Hi, Sean. Could you please touch base with student? In his autobiography poem, he said he feels terrible and that his family is a mistake. Unusual responses for sure. Okay. Did you respond to that email? I believe I did. Okay, so this is your response, September the 8th, 2021, 9.15 a.m. What is your response? Thanks for the heads up. I'm in senior meetings throughout the day, but we'll try and catch up with him. Okay. Now, do you recall that interaction with the defendant's son? In this case, I did not have a direct interaction with the defendant's son. I talked with the teacher. Okay, and tell us about that, please. I had a conversation with the teacher, and she explained to me um, a little bit more context of what had gone on. Um, she explained that he was Your joking. Honor, I would object to the um, hearsay. It's not offered for the truth of the matter, sir. The judge just offered what he did next and why. Okay, so what did you do next? So I had a conversation with the teacher who gave me greater context of what was going on within this. Um, and she stated that he was Your actually. Honor, I, would object I don't to think it was clear to him. Okay. Oh, well, that's all right. Um, based on your conversation with the teacher, what did you do next? May, did you? I did not have a email? meeting. I did not have a meeting with the student okay. at this time. And did you send a, an email to either the defendant or her husband, or a phone call to either the defendant or her husband? I did not. Okay, that's all. Okay. Now, in Oxford High School, are grades posted so parents can follow along? They are. Okay, and what system is that? That is through a system called PowerSchool. Okay. Um, they are given live updates through that system. And that's every parent of every student registered in Oxford School District that can follow along with assignments and things of that nature? Yes. Okay. And our parents also provided email updates to PowerSchool. I believe that they can get notifications through the PowerSchool system. And that sends an email? I'm not sure. If you, if you, know, if you know, that's all right. All right, now this was September the 8th, 2021. I'm gonna show you People's Exhibit 157. Now this is November the 10th, 2021 at 2.45 p.m. This is an email to you, is that right? That is correct. Okay, and can you tell us what this says, please? Student is having a rough time right now. He might need to speak with you. Okay, and then your response at 4.44 p.m. on November the 10th, 2021 was what? I'm sorry, I was in a meeting through the end of the day. I'll catch up with him. Okay, and did you catch up with him? I did the following day. Okay, tell us about that, please. I had a quick meeting in the hallway on his way to class and just let him know that um, if he needed somebody to talk to, that I could be there for him. Okay. Now, did you contact either that student's mother or father at that point? I did not. Okay, did you send it an email? And why not? Because it was something that was very typical. Um, I didn't have any information on the student other than he was sad, which to me is a pretty common thing and a normal thing. Um, and I just wanted to be able to offer a bridge that if that student wanted to talk. Okay. And you offered that bridge to the student? I did meet with that student in the hallway <coughs> and offered that opportunity. Okay. For the record, that was General Crumby's son, is that correct? That is correct. Now, the next time you've had any, any, any interaction with the defendant's son was November the 29th, 2021. Would that be right? Yes. Okay. This is Exhibit 158. Sir, this is an email um, to you that eventually was forwarded. Is that correct? This email was eventually forwarded to me fairly quickly after it was sent to the two on this email. Okay, so this is Monday, November 29th, 9.32 a.m. Can you read us, please, what the email says? I have a student to, during first hour today, defendant's son, 
who is on his phone looking at different bullets at the end of first hour today as I was walking around the room passing out their essays. I didn't get a chance to investigate it a bit further since it was the end of the hour. Now that he's on my radar, I'm also noticing some of his previous work that he's completed from earlier in the year leans a bit toward the violent side. I can bring these things later today during my fifth hour prep if you would like them. Okay, so this was 9.32 a.m. And you weren't on the initial email, but it was forwarded to you. It was forwarded to me. Okay, and tell us what happened next, please. Um, at this point, I received a phone call from Pam Fine, who was on the original email, asking if I would be able to come to her office. Um, she was planning to call down the student um, and meet to discuss the contents okay. of this email. Now, in, in the realm of either a school counselor or someone who's in discipline of students, um, there are certain <laughs> levels of escalation when it comes to contacting a student and or a parent. Would that be right? I would agree with that, yes. Okay. So there's a check-in. Your Honor, I would ask that the witness answer the questions and avoid the leading questions. Please. I'll be great. Okay, so earlier you testified that you had just met with the student's teacher in September of 2021. Yes. Okay, and you felt that was sufficient at that point? Yes, because I was able to gain more context. Okay. November the 10th of 2000, well actually you met with him November the 11th, 2021, you took the next step to meet with him? Yes. Okay. And now a decision was made, you just testified that, to um, actually bring the student into the office? That decision was made, I was not the one who made that decision. Sure. But as far as you're concerned in your role, what are the levels of escalation to contact either a parent or somebody else? It depends on the situation. Um, if it's a di discipline issue, I'd be contacting a dean or a principal, um, and then they would be the ones leading the meeting from there. If it's a social-emotional issue, or if I feel the student is at risk of harm to themselves, I would be contacting a parent um, in that case. Okay. <coughs> so, you said it was Pam Fine who was on that initial email, and what was her role at Oxford High School? She was a restorative practices coordinator at that time. So, <coughs> tell me what happened after you received that phone call. I walked to um, Pam Fine's office, um, and the student had been called down and then walked into her office. Okay, the student being the defendant's son? Yes. Okay, tell us about that meeting. It was fairly brief. Um, I was there as student support um, throughout the meeting, not to have direct conversation about the content of the meeting, um, but it was really a chance to get an idea of what he was looking at and why. Okay. When you said you were there for the standpoint of student support, what does that mean? Well, when a student is facing a potential discipline issue, it's fairly common to call a counselor in, um, as we are not the ones issuing the discipline in that case but we can be a person there who's in the corner for the student. So is that intentional to keep the discipline separate from the counselor? Yes. Why is that? Because the counselor is not a role of disciplinarian, the counselor is a role of student support. So your focus then would be on the, the mental health and well-being of the student, not if the school rule was violated? That is correct. But you said the meeting was, was fairly short? It was less than 10 minutes. Was a decision made to take the next step to contact a parent? There was a phone call to the parent after the meeting. Okay, now, do you know how that decision was made and why? I do not know how that decision was made or why. Okay. Um, were you there for that phone call? I was. And it was a voicemail? It was a voicemail. Okay, and who made it? You were Ms. Fine? Uh, Ms. Fine is the one who made the phone call. Now, when was the next time you had any interaction? Well, first we'll go through the rest of 158 here. It'll be on your screen. Okay. Um, this is when it was for the email forwarded to you at 934. Uh, can you read this email, please? I sent the following email to Nick and Pam. I wanted to make you aware as well. I'm not sure if you had any contact with this student. Okay, now who's Nick? Nick is, was a dean of students at Oxford High School at the time. Okay. And 936 a.m., um, you responded to the email. What did you write? Thanks, Jacqueline. I'll be touching base with him as well. Okay, thank you. Now, when is the next time that you had contact with the defendant's son? It would have been the following morning of November 30th. Okay. I'm going to show you what's already been admitted as 159. 
This is also an email. This is Tuesday, November 30th, 2021 at 8.05 a.m. Um, and you were on this initial email, correct? Yes. Okay, could you tell us what the email says, please? I know Jackie emailed you guys yesterday with some concerns about student in our first hour class. Today he is watching videos on his phone of a guy gunning down people. It looks like it's a movie scene and not security footage slash a real event, but definitely still concerning when taking into account some of his other behaviors. Okay, so this email was sent at 8.05 a.m. the morning of the shooting. Yes. What time did you receive it? Well, I received it at 8.05. I believe I responded and saw it about 30 minutes later. I'm sorry, that was a bad question. What, if you recall, what time did you actually read it? Around 8.30. Okay. What was your reaction when you read the email? My first reaction was, here we go again, of another conversation of you have to follow school rules, you have to be able to, to make decisions that aren't going to be detrimental to your time in class. Now, did you receive, subsequently you met with that student, correct? That is correct. Okay, but before you did, did you receive another email regarding him? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, well did you receive another email regarding the defendant's son that day? I did, but it was, what happened was um, a math teacher showed a picture to our Dean of Students, Nikki. Okay, Jeff. so I'm gonna show you 160 what's been admitted. Okay. This is um, from a teacher to you and Mr. Ejack, who references the Dean of Students. Yes. This was sent uh, 9.32 a.m., and this was a uh, photograph of a uh, drawing by the defendant's son. Yes, this was sent after I already had defendant's son in my office. Okay, so let's back up a little bit then. You <coughs> looked at the first email around 8.30 in the morning, you said? Yes. Okay, and then what decision did you make and why? I was on the phone when I saw the email, and upon hanging up the phone, I actually had um, Mr. Ejack come to my office. Um, Why is that? Because he had been shown the uh, math assignment, which is attached in the email currently on the screen. Okay. And then tell me about that conversation. Uh, he mentioned that uh, Ms. Morgan had uh, shown him this picture. I said, Ethan, because I had his schedule up on my computer going to uh, planning on talking with him. Okay. And then I made the decision as the counselor to go into his class um, because it is, when a counselor goes into a class, it could be for anything. Okay. Um, you said you had made the decision to speak with him. Was that because of the email you received before Mr. Ejack came and saw you or another reason? It was uh, based on the email that I received. Okay. And then when I already had the information that there was an assignment of some sort going on, then it solidified that decision even further that I was going to talk to the student. Okay, did Mr. Ejack show that to you or did you see it from the email? I did not see it until I saw the assignment in person in the class. In person in the He class. was okay. shown a picture of it on the phone. Who's he? Uh, Mr. Ejack. Okay. Was shown a picture of it on a cell phone. All right. Um, so I had not seen the assignment at that point. All right. And you made the decision to um, to retrieve the defendant's son from class and bring him to your office. Yes, his classroom was actually close to my office um, when he was in that hour. Okay. And so I made the decision that as a counselor, it would be easier for me to walk in there um, because that's a pretty common thing. Um, and then I ended up grabbing the assignment and walking back to my office with the student. Okay, now the, in, the first time you saw that assignment was in person in that classroom, Is that, that's correct? I really didn't look at it much, I had it, okay. um, but I wasn't studying it as we were walking back to my office. Okay, this is exhibit 123, it's already been admitted. Now there's things drawn out in words added and certain words crossed out. Was this the assignment that you retrieved from the defendant's son's classroom? Yes, it was. Okay, and then you brought the defendant's son back to your office, is that right? Yes. Okay, and then when, when would you say is the first time that you really took a look at this? A couple minutes after being back into my office was when I really took a look at it. Okay. Um, I, I went through the email I received with him um, with from who? Allison Car son? Yes, okay. the email from Allison Karpinski, and then um, got sought clarification on that email. 
And then after receiving the clarification from the student on that email, um, I then looked over the paper with the defendant's son. Okay, and what was your thought when you saw this paper, Exhibit 123? My first thought was I wanted to get from him what he was, what he was doing. His initial response was that it was a video game, that he liked drawing for video games and liked being able to, to create in that way. So I let him describe it in that way at first, and then I asked him to talk about some of the words that he had written down. Okay. Um, by this point, stuck out to me. So by this point, had you seen the original drawing? No. Okay. So the words you were asking to explain were on this sheet here, 123. That is correct. Okay. So what words in particular stood out to you? Um, I I noticed the words of "I love my life so much," "The thoughts won't stop." I could make out "Help me" under the crossed out part, um, and "Harmless act." So it made me concerned that a student may potentially be suicidal or be displaying suicidal ideation. Okay, so I take it you didn't take the defendant's son explanation at face value? I didn't take it at face value. Um, I accounted for it um, as his description, but I wanted to make sure that I was looking at as much of a picture as I could. Okay, so when you reviewed uh, this drawing, and again, this is before you saw the original drawing, um, did you decide then to ask more pointed questions? I did. I really wanted to point out the words that were in the drawing because they were the easiest to see and I wanted to get explanation for the words that wasn't just, it's a video game. Okay. Now when you were speaking with the defendants in your office, did he have a mask on? He did. Okay, did you have a mask on? I did. Could you tell what his demeanor was at that point? As best as you could, um, without complete facial expression. Um, you still have okay. tone of voice, you still have pace of speech. At this point, you never actually interacted with him without a mask, would that be right? That is correct. Okay. So, when you ask more pointed questions, tell us what happened next and why. His demeanor at first was very compliant, um, and as I started asking about the words and asking him to describe the words, his demeanor shifted towards more of a sad demeanor. Okay. Um, he started sharing some things that had gone on in his life. Like what? Uh, he mentioned that a family dog had died recently. Um, he mentioned that a grandparent had passed, um, that he was struggling with COVID and with school through COVID. Um, and he mentioned that he had an argument with his parents about grades the night before. Okay. Did he tell you that a friend of his had roughly left the state? He did. He did mention that a friend of his had left. Um, he didn't say the state, just wasn't attending school anymore. Okay. Now, did you make a decision based upon your conversation with him to call Jennifer Crumley? I did. Okay. Now, is that before or after you saw the original drawing? I don't remember. Okay. So during this conversation with the defendant's son, did you have the opportunity to look at the original drawing? I did receive the original drawing in an email, okay. um, probably 25 to 30 minutes after returning okay. him from class. So this is Exhibit 74, it's already been admitted. This is the uh, original drawing that was shared with you? Yes. Okay. Now what about this drawing causes you concern as well? This drawing also gave me a lot of concerns of suicide. Um, when I looked at it and I saw one body, when I looked at it and saw words that were internalized of the thoughts won't stop, help me, um, I started becoming concerned about the student's well-being and made the decision that I needed to involve parents. Okay, so we had talked about checking with the teacher, and checking with the student, calling the student in to the, to the office, and a phone call to the parent. Now you decided to not just call the parent, but also call them in? I did. Okay. Um, now, in the range of options with a counselor dealing with a parent, this is be the, the highest option. Would that be right? This would definitely be be up there. Yes. Okay. So, when was that decision made? How long? Let me ask you this: How long were you with the defendant's son before you made that decision to call his mother? To the best of my memory, at least twenty minutes. Okay. So, in that twenty-minute time span, though, you made the decision to bring her in. I did. Okay. Um, tell us how that happened. I asked, um, I, I actually told the student what I was going to do 
Um, I said, here's, here's where we're at, and here's what I have to do. And I let him know that in this case, I need to, I need to call your parents and get them involved because I want to make sure we get you help and support. Okay. Um, I then gave student the option uh, to choose which parent he wanted me to call. I do that quite frequently because it gives you, it gives you an insight into the student a little bit of sometimes they might say, please don't call this parent. Um, and the student's response was it would be easier to get a hold of mom. Um, so we, we called mom. Okay. Now, did you tell him that you had concerns of suicidal ideation before you called Jennifer Kermit? I do not believe that I told him that, no. And you indicated that you had seen in the fall of 2021 <coughs> other aspects of suicidal ideation for other students? Yes. Okay. And you said even some students have even attempted suicide? Sadly, yes. Okay. Um, so you've had these sort of meetings where you call a parent in before? I have. Okay. Um, and you said it was the defendant's son to call Jennifer Crumley, or at least you had an easier time getting a hold of her? Yeah, that was the statement. Um, so I called mom. Um, and I mom mean the defendant, Jennifer Crumley? Yes, that okay. is correct. Um, and she was unable to answer that phone call. Um, so I then asked... Well, how do you know that? It went to a voicemail? Yes. Okay. She did not answer she that phone answer. call. Okay. Um, and so I asked the student if it was okay for me to call his dad. Um, and he said yes. I called dad and it sounded like there was an answer, but it was also kind of like just dead air on the phone. Okay. Um, so I hung up. And a few moments later, I received a phone call back from Jennifer Crumley. Okay. Now, if I told you that we had phone logs admitted into evidence that showed you left a message for Jennifer Crumley at 9.24 a.m., would that sound right to you? That sounds about right, yes. Okay. And then it appeared from those same records that she had called you back at 9.27 a.m. Does that also sound right? That sounds about right. Okay. Tell us about the conversation between you and Jennifer Crumley at 9.27 a.m. Uh, I let her know that I had the student in my office and I had some concerns and was hoping that she would be able to come into the school. Was that on your office line? It was on my office line, yes. Did you have the um, telephone to your ear or was it speakerphone? At that point it was to my ear um, and I believe that mom asked to speak with Ethan or the student. Um, so I, I then um, put it on speakerphone and allowed them to talk to each other as well. Okay, tell me about that, please. Mom asked the student what was going on, um, and he, he didn't really have much, just kind of. Okay. Did you tell the defendant that you had a drawing you were going to send her, the math worksheet? I believe I did, yes, okay. and then I sent it to her, okay. um, to her cell phone. And did she comment on that drawing, the math worksheet, to you while she was on the phone with you? Not to my memory. Um, you indicated to Jennifer Crumbly that you needed her to come into the office, is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Did she say, okay, I'll be right there, or did she say something else? She uh, was hoping that Dad would be able to do it, that it would be difficult for her to get there. Um, to leave work and that she worked approximately 30 minutes from the school. Okay, and that was 9.27 a.m. And when she told you that it would be difficult for her to come there, was that on speakerphone? I do not remember. Okay, so what was your, from the records it shows a, about a five minute phone call between you and, and Jennifer Crumbly at that point in time. Were you left with the impression that she was on her way then or that you had to find another parent? I was left with the impression that she was going to try and contact dad um, to have dad come. Um, and then approximately 10 minutes later, she called again saying that she was unable to get a hold of dad um, and that she would be on her way. Okay. She being Jennifer Crumbly. Yes, that is correct. All right. And you said you forwarded this Exhibit 74 to Jennifer Crumbly. This, this was forwarded in the email. And then this Exhibit 123 was also forwarded to her. That was uh, texted to her cell phone. Texted Jennifer from her cell phone. Yes. All right. Is this a good, good or bad time to break? 
this this will be fun. Yeah, there there are lunches here. So, um, Ms. Mr. Hopkins, you can't discuss your testimony with anyone before you return. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Um, we'll come back at one o'clock. Okay.
echoey word.
How long have you been with the Free Press?
Yeah, you can leave it back. I, yeah, mine was on my desk. Okay. Yeah. Your Honor, calling people versus Jennifer Crumbly, case number 2227 FH. Good afternoon. I have a question for you. Um, we had a discussion about a juror last week. I think the juror, because I said, if anyone approaches you or does anything, let me know. And I also.
ask all of you to exit with the exception of juror number five. Juror in seat five, okay? My clerks are like, what the heck is she doing? So that's what not oh. yeah, yeah, just for a few minutes, just for, for a few minutes. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> I think I am. Thank you. Thank you. So you, you're off, right? This will yes, take yes. just a second. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you.
You may be seated. Well, we're going to continue Mr. Hopkins' testimony. Okay. Okay. You are Sean Hopkins? Yes. And you are Sondra, okay? Understood. Okay. You can be seated. Go ahead, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. Well, Mr. Hopkins, when we broke for lunch, we were talking about the phone conversation you had with Jennifer Crumbly when you called her in at the school. Yes. Okay. So, that morning, did both Jennifer and James Crumbly come to the school? They did. Okay. Do you recall approximately what time? I believe it was around 10.30. Okay. Now, if, if I were to tell you that we had video surveillance that showed that you welcomed, into, welcomed them to your office at 10.40, would that sound right? That sounds right. So, walk us through what happened from the time that you were notified that James and Jennifer Crumbly were there to the time that you went and welcomed them. Um, so, when I was notified that they were there, I had actually um, texted Mr. Ejack to please come back to my office. Um, he had been present through a majority of the meeting until we confirmed the parents were arriving um, and then asked him to return. Um, I then went out to the lobby of the counseling office area to greet um, the parents. Okay. So from the phone call where you actually spoke with Jennifer Crumley was 9.27 a.m. From that point, 9.27 a.m. until 10.40 a.m., where was the defendant's son? In my office. Okay. And what was going on there? Uh, there was a conversation between... Um, Myself, the defendant's son, and Mr. Ejack was there as well until approximately 10 a.m. Um, during that time, I was still trying to affirm that parents would be able to arrive, um, and I was talking with, um, with the student about really what I was going to be sharing with his parents. Okay. Um, and tell me, sir, what, what, what was your expectation of the result of that meeting that you called? My hope was that they would set um, a plan to get help for their son. Okay. Was your expectation that they would take their son home? That was my hope. Your hope. Okay. So at 10.40 a.m., you welcome them into your office. Tell me what happens next. Uh, we walked back into my office. The student was in there. Um, and then uh, mom and dad sat down. Uh, there were three seats in my office, two directly across from me, and then one um, that was kind of off the corner of my desk a little more. Um, the student was in one of the two across from me. Dad sat in one of those, and Mom sat in the one that was more at a diagonal from, from okay. where I was. When the defendant and her husband walked into the <coughs> office, did they approach their son? Not to my memory, no. Okay, did either one of them hug their son? So who started the meeting? I believe I did. Um, and I uh, went over some of the things that I had talked through um, over the past two days with their son. Um, I wanted to confirm some things I wasn't sure of, so I confirmed with <coughs> mom uh, that she did receive a voicemail from Miss Fine the day before uh, and just confirmed that what was stated in that meeting was true. Um, and mom confirmed that she received it and that that was true. Um, and then I went over some of the things that I had received messages of, of the from the teachers over the past um, two days. Okay. Now, when you were asking Jennifer Crumley to confirm that information, was she sharing any additional information with you? Not to my memory, no. Okay. Now, describe Jennifer Crumley's demeanor when she walked into your office. She sat down in the chair, um, felt a little bit distant. Um, what do you mean by that? More just kind of like it felt like it was a little bit of an inconvenience to be there. Okay, you testified that you had had to have these meetings in the past. Yes. Was this meeting similar to those meetings or was it different? Your Honor, objection to all ways. Judge, it's, it's relevant because the crux of this case is the defendant's failure to use ordinary care to avoid um, a tragedy. And her failure to use just ordinary care contributed to her failure to adhere to her parental responsibilities, which is her duty under Michigan law. It's all part of gross negligence, Judge. 
Well, I guess it was was the meeting unusual in any way? How, how many meetings like this have you had with parents in general? Dozens. Dozens, okay. So, I mean, people react differently to no, no one's very excited about coming to the school about their child, right? I would, I would agree. Right. Well, this wasn't a discipline issue, though, was it, sir? Uh, no. Okay. In fact, you had indicated, Jennifer Crumble, that you had concerns with suicidal ideation. I had concerns for his well-being, absolutely. And you communicated um, that to Mrs. Crumbly before she got there? Yes. Okay. And yet still it was different than the dozens of meetings you had in the past? I would agree. All right. So you said that the um, defendant's son sat directly across from you. James Crumbly was in a chair next to him. Jennifer Crumbly was off to your side. I don't remember which chair um, student and dad were That's in. Fine. I know they were both across from me, and Jennifer Crumbly was off to the side a little okay. more. So um, you were asking them to confirm the voicemail, information left on the voicemail November the 29th, the day before? Yes. Okay, specifically, what information were you asking them to confirm? I asked first that they received the voicemail, um, because I didn't know at that point whether they had or not. Um, and then I asked to confirm the details of the voicemail, which were that um, shooting guns were a hobby that they undertook as a family and that they had went to the range over the weekend. Okay. Uh, did you tell Jennifer Crumbly that her son ex expressed to you um, his own feelings of his friend leaving the state? I did mention that, yes. Okay, and what else did you mention? I mentioned um, the conversations I had with the student, with the friend um, leaving, that the student was sad about that, the dog, um, family dog passing, the grandparent of COVID being hard, um, and all of those which were told to me by the student were also confirmed by okay. the parents. Now when you say confirmed, I take it that, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but this didn't catch Jennifer Crumley by surprise. It did not feel as though it was new information to okay. the parents. All right. Now you testified that it was your hope that they would take him home that day. What do you mean by that? I wanted to make sure the student was able to get the support that I felt was needed, um, and I was wanting it to be as soon as possible. Did you feel like that he could be left alone at that point? I did not want him left alone at that point. In fact, that's why I kept him in my office until I could make contact with parents. Okay, and you communicated that to the defendant? I do not remember if I communicated that to the defendant. Okay. So when you um, discussed, well, first of all, did you communicate your hope that they take him home to the defendant? Yes, um, I, I, my words were, I want him to be seen as soon as possible, today if possible, and I actually provided a list of mental health resources um, and handed that to mom. Now when you say a list of mental health resources, could you explain a little bit more what that means? Yeah, it was multiple pages of different services throughout the area, um, what they specialized in, um, whether they accepted insurance or not, and contact information for those. <coughs> Um, different therapeutic options. Okay, and that was actually provided to the defendant and her husband? I handed it to mom. Okay. Now, when you communicated your, your expectation, what was Jennifer Crumbly's response? I didn't feel as if it was going to be an absolute no, but it was made quite clear that it wasn't possible to do it that day. Why do you say it was made clear it wasn't possible to do it that, that day? That they had to return to work and they were unable to do it that day. Well, who's, who said that? Mom. Mom is in Jennifer Crumbly? Yes. Did she speak for James, or did James speak as well? I don't remember James speaking on that topic. So what happened next? Um, my comment was, then I said I'd like to see him as soon as possible. Today is possible. I was told today is not possible, so I said, it's 48 hours possible. I will, I will be following up. In those dozens of meetings in the past, had anyone ever said that they couldn't have their son go with them that day? I had not had that happen in a situation. Your Honor, I don't object to the relevance. It's the same response as the last objection. Okay, well, had, had, I guess you, you'd want to back up even further. Had you ever asked parents to t take their child home with them that day? Have you ever requested that before? I've encouraged parents to be able to get their son and or daughter um, help and therapy. I had never had it where it was feeling like I needed to push to make it happen. And you say the feeling like you needed to push to make it happen, that's what you're experiencing November the 30th, 2021. That is correct. Okay. 
So tell me what's going on through your mind at this point. I was a little caught off guard and a little confused um, because it was something that I wasn't really expecting that type of response, um, especially when parents came and in fact, both parents came, which I wasn't expecting, nor did I request. Um, I was a little surprised at their willingness to come, but then not completely follow through. Okay. Now, you told the defendant and her husband that your opinion was this drawing showed suicidal ideation. Is that right? That was, that was my opinion, and I did not... Um, I saw it as somebody who was showing signs that could be associated with suicide. And so I took that and out of just an abundance of caution, wanted to make sure that the student was able to get help. Okay, and, but you communicated that to the defendant. I did. Did you specifically ask them to take him home that day? I did not specifically ask them to take him home. I asked them to take him to get help and therapeutic help. Now when it was made clear to you that Jennifer Crumbly was not going to take her son home, and neither was James. Um, what is your next step? My next step was to try and think of what is best for this student in front of me in this moment. Okay, and tell me about your decision process. When I looked through it, it was, it was clear they weren't going to take him that day. Um, so my first thought was, I don't want him alone. Um, I want to make sure somebody who's experiencing why didn't you want him alone? Because I don't want a student who may be suicidal alone. Okay. I cut you off. Please continue. I, I then, um, after determining I didn't want him alone, I went through different options of what needed to happen. At that point, the student had requested to be able to stay in class. Um, and parents were on board with him staying in class as a good placement. Um, I was with our dean, who would be the person in, who does discipline, um, and of the four adults in the room, I'm the one who can't remove a student from class. So I asked our dean if there was any reason from a discipline standpoint or anything that he needed to do from a discipline standpoint um, that would prevent the student from returning to class. And the response there? No. Okay. So you told us that you were taken, taken aback. Uh, you were a bit confused by the response of the defendant. Um, and now you moved on to your next decision with the information in front of you. Um, is that when you turned to Mr. Ejack and requested information regarding discipline? It is. Okay. And how, how did the meeting end? Tell us about that. The meeting at that point ended um, fairly abruptly. What do you mean by that? Well, at that point, we had a student wanting to return to class. I knew that he wasn't going to be able to be removed to go get therapy that day. Um, so I was kind of left with an option of, okay, this student, I can't keep a student from class if there isn't a reason to keep him from class. Um, I asked if there was a discipline reason, and if, um, once we had kind of gotten to that point, I allowed the student to go back to class um, based on the information I had, and then mom asked if we were done. And Those were her point. words, are we done? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, what was your response to that? My response was, I guess so. Okay. Now, you let her son go back to class before James and Jennifer left your office, is that right? There was a short time overlap of maybe one minute. Okay. <laughs> So tell us what happened when it was communicated to the defendant's son that he could go back to class and he left. What happened in that time frame? There wasn't anything noteworthy or different than any other student I had leave my office. I wrote a pass um, to allow him back into the classroom okay. um, and he had his, his belongings and went to class. When he left, did either James or Jennifer hug him? Not to my memory, no. Did they say anything to him? Not to my memory. Did you say anything to him? I did. What did you say? Um, when I handed him his pass, I just let him know that I cared about him. And why did you say that? Because I do. Like, I did. It, it was an hour and a half with a 
student who is sad with a student that we were talking about future plans. Now in the time span from when you wrote him a pass and he went back to his class and James and Jennifer were still there, did they continue discussion without him? I don't remember any. Okay. So what happened next? Um, I had handed them the sheet with referrals and uh, to my memory they gathered up belongings and left. Now what was your plan as far as follow-up had this attack not happened? My plan as far as follow-up was I was going to meet with the student the next morning um, to see if there had been more discussions and more plans about getting help. And then if there had not, my plan was to call Child Protective Services. Now how long would you say the meeting lasted from beginning to end? Less than 15 minutes. All right. And again, was that typical or atypical from these meetings right. that you've been in before? Objection. Same response, Judge. In your experience, what, how long do these meetings usually last? They vary. I mean, I've had some where parents came, got their kids, and it was five minutes. Okay. I've had some where we were in my office for an hour. Okay. So the instances where they grabbed their kid, that was quick. Could be, yes. But when they spoke and talked through things, it was much longer. Yes. May I have one more, Your Honor? <coughs> Nothing further. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Hopkins. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Shannon. I represent Mrs. Crumbly. When I'm asking questions today, if I ask anything confusing, can you please slow me down and let me know? I will do so. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it's true that you are licensed as a school counselor, correct? That is correct. What does it mean to be licensed as a school counselor, or what does one have to do to obtain a license? You have to graduate with a degree um, from an accredited university and meet all the standards of the state of Michigan to become a school counselor. And I'm, obviously you did that. Yes. Um, what are the, can you give us the example and some examples of the standards? I have to meet the required trainings based on hours um, over, over a certain period of years. Do you recall how many hours or? Well, they're broken up into specific categories, but in totality, um, it's on top of the degree, 150 hours every five years. 150 every five years. And you just mentioned that they're broken up into categories. Can you just give us a quick idea of what these categories are? Yep, um, some are based on college. Um, they, they have to be hours specific towards helping students get to college. Some are based on careers and some are more general. Is there, are any of those based on um, suicide prevention or danger at school or discipline? Those hours are not, but a degree in counseling is. Okay. Um, aside from receiving your degree in those 150 hours of training, um, or hours that you had to obtain your license, did you have any other additional training or continuing type education regarding becoming a counselor? Or yes. Okay, tell us about that. The training is continual and goes well and above, well above and beyond 150 hours. It's oftentimes based on school need and oftentimes based on what is important in the profession. And when you were testifying, I, I, did you say you graduated in 2012? No. I'm sorry, 2009? I graduated undergrad in 2009, master's in 2015. I'm sorry, okay, master's in 15. And at what point did you become licensed? Were you licensed, um, what year? I passed the school counseling exam in the summer of 2014. Okay, so starting in summer of 2014, you had to do at least 150 hours every five year period, correct? When I was hired in 2015 and had the full licensure, I did five years, renewed my license in 2020. Did you do the 150 hours or did you do more hours? More. How, can you give us an idea of how many hours? It, it significantly more. Okay, when you say significantly more, are you talking double the number of hours, 
50 extra hours? I wouldn't keep track of all the hours that far beyond, but significantly more. Okay, I still, I understand, I, I still More know. than 200. More than 200, okay. And then, again, you've continued since that time when you renewed your license in 2020 um, to keep getting more and more hours, correct? Correct. So by 2021, it's fair to say um, you had over the 150 hours you needed, um, the additional hours you talked about, and then you had already started moving on into the 150 you would need for renewing your license um, for the next five years. Yes. Okay, did I say all that right? I believe so. Okay, thank you. Um, now, when, um, I want to go back through the exhibits that Mr. Keast admitted uh, while you were on the stand. And if you need to see any of the exhibits, um, please let me know. I'm going to start with 155, which were the emails um, that started off with uh, Miss De is it DeRiker? It is DeRiker. DeRiker. Um, do you need to see that in order to? I would like to see that. Okay. Yes, please. Your Honor, may I uh, put it up on the screen what's been admitted? Sure. I'm sorry. What is the number? Is this it? is going to be number uh, 155. And I just need to. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so number 155, um, do you recall seeing this exhibit when Mr. Keast was speaking with you? Yes, he showed the bottom email portion. Okay, and the bottom email is from May 13th of 2021, correct? That is correct. And the issue on this day was a teacher wanted you to speak to Mrs. Crumley's son to see how he's doing because he was failing class and trying to sleep all the time, correct? Yes, it states he is failing my class and tries to sleep all the time. Now, on this issue on May 13th of 2021, I may have missed it. You don't recall meeting with, the, with Mrs. Crumbly's son to see if what was going on, do you? I do not have memory of this meeting. Do you, do you not have memory of the meeting or did you not meet with him? Do you even know? I do not have memory of the meeting. Evidence that has been researched suggests that I did meet with him. On, at that time in May of 2021, you did not call Mrs. Crumbly to discuss this falling in sleep um, and failing a class, correct? To my memory, I did not. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go to the next exhibit, which is number 156. Okay, and it's popping up on the screen. So number 156, um, this is from September of 2021, so a couple of months later, correct? Yes, and the next school year. Oh, well, that's what I was going to say. So the May would have been the end of one school year, and September would be the beginning of the next school year. Yes. Okay, in September, on September 8th of 2021 specifically, um, the Spanish teacher asked you to check in with Mrs. Crumbly's son because he had written a poem that said he felt terrible that his family is a mistake, correct? Yes, that is what she wrote in the email. Now, on this occasion, in September of 2021, did you speak with Mrs. Crumbly's son? No. You did not. Okay, so then it would also be fair to say that you did not call Mrs. Crumbly herself and let her know that this concern had taken place. Yes, as I stated earlier, I followed through with the teacher okay. on this concern, and she gave me further clarification of what had occurred. Okay, so at the end of the day, after further clarification, all said and done, this September 8th date, you did not call, you did not place a phone call to Mrs. Crumbly. Correct. You did not email her or, I suppose, communicate with her in any way, correct? That is correct. 
I'm going a couple months later, we saw exhibit 157, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that up on the screen. Now, 157 is the um, emails dated, uh, it looks like November 10th of 2021. <coughs> Um, this was an email from a Spanish teacher to you indicating that Mrs. Crumbly's son is having a rough time and may need to speak with you, correct? Yes, and she writes he is having a rough time right now. He might need to speak with you. And on this occasion, you did speak with Mrs. Crumbly's son, correct? I did. This was the occasion where you saw him in the hallway and had a conversation with him, correct? Yes, I caught him during passing time where there are a couple of minutes in between classes and let him know that if he needed someone to talk to, that I would be there. Okay, so you you talked to him, offered support, um, let him know where, where he could find you, correct? Correct. Now, on this occasion, in November, on November 10th of 2021, after speaking with Mrs. Crumbly's son, you did not call Mrs. Crumbly, correct? I did not. You did not email Mrs. Crumbly about what, what took place with her son, correct? I did not contact her in any way based on this email. Now I'm gonna go to uh, November 29th of 2021. This was admitted as People's Exhibit 158. Yeah, I've got it up on the screen. And this appears to be um, an email chain between you and uh, Mrs. Cabina. Is that correct? Yeah, she sent me. Um, this is actually just saying that she forwarded the message. This is not the message. I apologize. This message, however, that's forwarded makes you aware that Mrs. Crumbly's son was looking at different bullets in his first hour of class, correct? Yes, I do not have that email in front of me right now. Um, so yeah. I don't have the exact wording, there it is. I'm sorry, it's page two, so I just Thank had to scroll you. down. Thank you. Yeah, so it's uh, alerting our Dean of Students and Ms. Fine um, that there was a student in first hour who was on his phone looking at different bullets at the end of the hour. Now, on this date, on November 29th, 2021, um, you did witness Mrs. Fine, Ms. Fine leaving a voicemail, letting Mrs. Crumbly know what happened, correct? That is correct. I witnessed Ms. Fine calling um, Ms. Crumbly and then leaving a voicemail regarding a conversation that happened during school. And this jury has already heard the voicemail. Um, we can agree that there is no request by Ms. Fine or the school that Mrs. Crumbly return the call, correct? I don't remember the voicemail um, because I have not listened to it. It would not be odd to me if there was a request or not a request. Thank you. Now, in that voicemail, um, I'm sorry, I, I'm not gonna ask you about the voicemail. Um, at the time of this issue of looking up bullets, you and Pamela Fine discussed this issue, correct? What do you mean by discussed? I'm not sure I understand. I'm assuming and asking, did you and Ms. Fine dis discuss the fact that Mrs. Crumley's son was looking up bullets? Are you asking in reference before the student arrived? Yes, before or when the student arrived, either. There was not much time between me getting there and the student arriving. Um, the context of the meeting was largely led by Ms. Fine to gain an understanding from the student's perspective of what, what was going on at the end of the hour. Um, first, to see if he was going to be forthcoming with the truth, and then to see what was actually going on and what his reasons for doing so were. And when you guys spoke with him about the bullets, there was also discussion about 
other things people may look up on the internet that are not illegal, but just not appropriate during school hours, correct? There was discussion about school appropriate behavior, yes. And overall, Mrs. Crumley's son was told bullet, looking at bullets not appropriate for school, correct? Yes, looking at bullets is not appropriate during school. And beyond that, there was no further disciplinary action taken by the school other than just a notification phone call voicemail to Mrs. Crumbly. To my knowledge, but I would not be the one making the disciplinary decisions. As far as you know, though, that, there, that was the end of it. That was the end of my involvement in it. Okay. Now I'm going to turn to um, Exhibit uh, 159. This was admitted um, when you testified. And this is an email that appears to be between Allison Karpinski um, and you are, this was sent to you by Ms. Karpinski. Do you recall this, this email? I do. Now, this email is dated on um, November 30th, 2021. Yes. Correct? And no, we agree, 2000, I'm sorry, November 30th, 2021 is the day that ultimately becomes the shooting the day of the shooting. Yes. And this email was sent at 8.05 a.m. by the teacher uh, to you. Yes. And specifically mentions that Mrs. Crumbly's son was watching videos on his phone of a guy gunning down people, correct? It says that today he is watching videos of his phone of a guy gunning down people, and to continue, she writes, it looks like a movie scene and not security footage slash a real event. Okay, so she, she represented that it looked like a movie scene. It doesn't look like a real event. Okay, and, but she mentioned that it's definitely still concerning, correct? Yeah, she says when taking into account some of his other behaviors that she found it definitely still concerning. Now, when you, when did you become aware that Mrs. Crumley's son was watching these vi these concerning videos? When I read the email. At 8.05 in the morning? I did not read the email at 8.05. I believe I read it approximately 30 minutes later. Okay, so you would have read this email um, at approximately 8.30 that morning. Around that time, yes. Now, when you read the email at 8.30 that morning, you did not um, call, the, call Mrs. Crumley's son down to the office to ask him about these videos, correct? I was on the phone at the time with other parents. So you did not call Mr. Crumbly, Mrs. Crumbly's son down to ask him about about the videos, that's fair, correct? I did, as soon as I was able to. Okay, so there's a time lapse between when you got the email and when you were able to speak with Mrs. Crumley's son. Yes. Now, when you spoke to um, Mrs. Crumley's son, you did not ask him to bring up the videos and let you watch what he was watching, correct? Correct. I asked him what he was watching. And you relied on the information he provided to you about what he was watching. Exactly as I would if I asked him to show me the videos, yes. I'm sorry, I don't understand what that means. I was relying on him to provide the information, which would be the same as if I had asked him to show the videos. Okay, but if you saw the videos, you would know specifically what they look like you are instead relying on what Mrs. Crumley's son says was on the videos, correct? Yes, I asked him what they were and he told me what they were. And I relied on the information he gave me. When he told you what the videos were, the information you relied on, did he tell you where he obtained those videos from? No. Do you have any idea, or did you ask, how long he was looking at those videos for? I did not.
Now, on November 30th, so about an hour after the time period we just discussed, that was when Ms. Morgan made you aware of this math paper that we've discussed extensively in this trial, correct? Ms. Morgan did not make me aware of the math paper. She made Mr. Ejack aware of the math paper. I apologize, and then was it Mr. Ejack that made you aware of it? Yes. Okay, thank you, and thank you for clearing that up. Now, your testimony, um, you testified about the math paperwork, your observations, your thoughts about it, on a couple of occasions over the last couple of years. Is that a fair statement? Yes. And when you saw the original uh, photograph or the original math paper, we can agree that there is a gun drawn on on the math paper. Which one are you referring to as the original? I'm I'm speaking about the one. Uh, let me put it up on the screen. It Thank would be you. it's within Exhibit 160, and it's the uh, prior to alterations the math paper. Do you recall seeing this? Um, there you oh, go. Thank you. Yes, I was sent this in an email um, approximately 30 minutes into our meeting. Okay, now when you saw, did you see the altered math test first, or did you see the, I called this the original, there's also one, because let's just be clear here, um, the shooter drew on a math paper, and what we see on the screen is, is that original uh, drawing and writing. Is, is that correct? What you see here is the photograph taken by the math teacher. Of the original paper. As it was when she had it, yes. And then after she had it, the, sh the shooter wrote more on the paper and we ended up with a second math paper that is essentially the original math paper plus some writings on it, correct? Well, it's doctored. Doctored, okay, right. So there's, so I'm gonna call this the original and then I'm gonna call the other one with the additional writing the altered version. Is that okay with you? Understood. Okay, for the purpose of questioning. Okay, now, I'm going to open up the <coughs> altered version as well, which was admitted as Exhibit uh, 123, okay? So it's fair to say that you are familiar both with, with the original uh, math paper and with the altered one. Correct? I was able to look at both of them over the course of our meeting, correct. And when you look at both papers, it's very clear that Mrs. Crumbly's son drew a picture depicting a gun, correct? Yes, and the one especially that has no scribbles over it, I would not say that without context that it would be very clear on the altered one that that is a gun without context of the original. Okay, I, I agree with you. So you're saying that the first photo on the left of the screen, it's clearly a gun, but when he altered the drawing, he crossed it off so much you might not know that had been a gun drawn there. Correct. Okay, when you saw the gun drawn on the sheet, that seeing that gun, in even just seeing the gun, that was not enough to make you believe that Mrs. Crumbly's son posed a risk to himself or other students, correct? I wasn't sure whether he posed a risk to himself, um, so that is why I called in the parents. Okay. Um, I was concerned, and I wouldn't call in parents unless I was concerned. Okay, so you called the parents in because you were concerned, but we can agree that seeing the drawings, um, just the drawings alone, were not enough for you to conclude 
there is something dangerous to to other people. When I take that in context, that is only a piece of the information I had. I also was looking at his demeanor throughout it. I also was asking questions to him, um, asking if he was a threat to himself or others, and taking his response of sadness, which is not a common threatening response. Okay, and it's it, in all fairness, um, it when you so and you've had lots of training on this, correct? I have had training on this. So you've been trained, um, you've been formally trained on how to assess this kind of information and, and how to deal with it, correct? Correct, and the number one way that I would be dealing with it would be to entrust to care to parents. To entrust the parents um, with the care of their child. Correct. Okay, so, There was talk um, at some point in the materials from this case about a step one, step two, step three. Do you know what I'm talking about in terms of evaluating a suicide risk? I, I don't know what direct thing you're referring to. Okay, there's, um, are there certain <coughs> steps if you do have concern that you follow if a student is exhibiting what you called suicide ideation? Well, suicide ideation is very different than actively suicidal. Okay. So I wonder if what you're describing might be an active suicide checklist as opposed to what we do if we see suicidal ideation. Well, what do you do if you, you said in this case you were concerned about suicidal ideation, correct? Yes. So what do you do when it's a concern of suicidal ideation? I call the parents. Call the parents. Okay, and that's what you did, obviously, in this case. Yes. Okay, and one of the questions I do have for you, and I, this, um, I'm just going to page 72 from the um, civil deposition. This is just for you guys. Page 72 of the civil deposition is where I'm getting this question from. Um, A drawing of somebody who is shooting a gun um, is just a drawing. That is something you've said before, correct? I do not remember. If there's not another person in the drawing, that's of significance to you when you see a picture of a gun, correct? Are you referencing in regards to the math assignment? Yes. In the math assignment, if I see multiple people, I do have a different level of concern. Okay, so explain for us then what, um, and I don't know why that clicked off, but it's going to pop back up. So explain to us what you mean by when you see another person or you don't see another person. Tell us what you see up here and how things would change if there were multiple people. Well, I see one body. If I see somebody holding the gun in one body, my, my response is completely different. Okay, so and have you had training about looking at drawings by students and being able to take them into account when you're assessing situations? I've had training in how to assess situations. I would not say I've had training in students' drawings. Okay, but your, your um, conclusion was that because there's not... Um, a second person seeing a gun on these pages in and of itself alone would not be enough to cause you concern. Again, you're taking a very small piece of that. That is just a piece of what I saw in totality. Okay. So you were asked before, you didn't see anything that suggested that there was a gun in the hand on this drawing, and your answer was no, correct? In regards to this drawing? Yes. I do not see a gun in someone's hand on this drawing. Okay, you were asked. That's a pretty important thing for you to know or not. Do you agree? Your answer was a drawing of somebody who is shooting a gun. Still, there's not another person. It's just a drawing. Do you recall testifying that way when you were previously asked about this drawing? That was not in regards to this drawing. 
This, it's fair to say that, which drawing was it in regards to then? Not this one. So you testified at a deposition on September 14th of 2022, correct? I believe that was the date, correct. And there are, the discussion prior to those questions was about the drawing in class that day. Um, and the drawing being on the violent side. Do you recall that? In regards to the email from the teacher that we discussed earlier, yes. Okay, so at the end of the day, your prior testimony that seeing a drawing of a gun, that in and of itself, by itself, does not create enough of a concern that something more sinister is happening, correct? We are looking at a total picture and not just a piece of a picture. And you are trained to look at that total picture, correct? I took the approach to look at the total picture. In addition to looking at the total picture, and by picture I'm saying the picture that was drawn, you also look at the picture in terms of the demeanor of the person you're speaking to, the way the person is presenting, the way the student is behaving, a number of factors, correct? I try to take in as much information as I can. And taking in as much information as you can is certainly something that you have learned to do through, in addition to your training, your experience, correct? Yes. This is not the first time that you're calling a student down to your office to talk to them about something, uh, something that may be problematic, correct? Well, and that's why I was not the only one in the meeting, was I didn't want to take the approach of I, I was the only one making the call. I also had our person in charge of discipline with me. And when you, so you are in the meeting, and when you're saying the person in charge of discipline, you're talking about Mr. Ejack, correct? Yes. And Mr. Ejack is going to testify, but your understanding is that Mr. Ejack has also had training on dealing with these kind of situations, correct? I do not know his total background. You would assume that as the dean of, assistant dean of school, of the school, I'm just he's got training. A question for this Mr. Ejack will testify, it's appropriate for him. I'll withdraw the question, Your Honor. Yeah, he can answer that, Mr. Ejack. Now, when you asked um, Mrs. Crumbly's son about the videos he was watching, he indicated to you that he wanted to be a, a video game designer, correct? He did. And he actually had a, a, a detailed conversation with you about an opportunity that Oxford has for students to get training to become video game designers, correct? I showed him a program through Oakland Schools that could lead him into that area. Okay, so you and you and Mrs. Crumbly's son had a conversation about if he was interested in pursuing a video game designer career, the school uh, system even has opportunities for him to further that interest. Yes. And in that conversation, when you were speaking to Mrs. Crumbly's son, you believed he had a genuine interest in this video game designing future. Yes, I did. If you believed that Mr. that Mrs. Crumbly's son did not have a genuine interest in becoming a designer, or that he really was drawing pictures with a plan to hurt people, you would have certainly taken different actions, correct? If I believed that he was a threat to people, I would have taken different actions. Now, you testified about when the uh, parents came in and this, this meeting that you had with them. You obviously recall that, correct? I do recall the meeting. Now, when you met with the parents, they were present for approximately 12 minutes out of the entire time you spent with Mrs. Crumbly's son. Yes. And you testified that you were with Mrs. Crumbly's son for approximately an hour and a half, correct? Correct. So it would have been an hour and a half, including those 12 minutes. Yes. Now, prior to that hour and a half spent with Mrs. Crumley's son, 
you had never spent any kind of time, really, aside from short conversations with Mrs. Crumbly's son, correct? Correct. And you also had never spent time with Mr. or Mrs. Crumbly um, talking to them about or handling matters regarding their son, correct? Correct. So when Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly arrived at the school and were communicating with you on this issue, these are not parents that you're seeing on a weekly or even monthly basis, correct? Correct. I imagine at the school there are other situations where you have students that are essentially frequent flyers down to your office, correct? I do know some students more than others. And some of the students that you deal with more frequently, you're also used to dealing with their parents on a more frequent basis, correct? Potentially correct. And the more times you have to deal with the parents and the more times you have to deal with their child, the more you get to know about the family and the dynamics of the relationships, correct? Yes, I would hope the more time I spend with someone, the better I know them. So when you... Um, are talking about how the Crumbleys greeted their son or did not hug their son, it's fair to say that you are not aware, you've never really seen the Crumbleys greet their son on other occasions, correct? Correct. I'm not making a judgment. I'm normal. I'm simply stating what happened. Okay, and that's completely fair. And I, I just want to confirm, though, that in terms of when you're making the observation, there was no hug or a certain kind of greeting, um, you also don't have, you haven't had the experience of seeing the Crumbleys greet their son on other occasions. Correct. And it's also fair to say that when parents come into the office, parents all have, may have a different reaction about their child being down in the counselor's office or in the principal's office. Correct? Well, first I would say those are two very different places. Okay. But no, you don't expect all parents to respond in the same way. You get parents who are angry at their child as they're walking in the door, right? Rarely. Some people are coming in and have more of an anxious look. They could. Some parents may come in and just seem like this is no big deal. Again, all parents could respond differently. Okay, so, so there's any number of responses, and in the end, and. If your training says any different, let me know. There is no right answer about specifically how a parent should respond to going to a school counselor's office or going to a school principal's office. Yes, again, I stated I'm not making a judgment. I'm simply stating what happened. Thank you. Now, the dates that we talked about um, are dates where, obviously, through the course of this investigation, um, you identified emails where you were involved with Mrs. Crumbly's son. Is that a fair statement? I'm not sure what your question is. Did you provide the emails that we talked about and that were admitted as exhibits? Did I provide them? Uh, the Oakland County Sheriff's Department had full access to my email. Okay, did you at any point go through your emails to take a look at any emails related to Mrs. Crumbly's son? On the night of the shooting, I did, with a police officer, go through and search for anything I could think of from that day and print and hand them to him. Okay, and then ultimately, any of these other emails we've seen um, were discovered by, by law enforcement. Yes, there's been a full cooperation with that. Okay, and I'm not trying to allege you haven't been cooperative. I'm just, I'm just asking okay. um, that those emails, obviously, um, I imagine all your emails are stored on some kind of a system. Would that be? Uh, not my area. I not mine either. This jury learned about my technology abilities <laughs> on Friday. Um, I want to just turn your attention to a couple of dates. On March 8th and March 9th of 2021, you didn't have any experiences with Mrs. Crumbly's son uh, related to um, needing counseling or being called down to the principal's office, correct? I don't remember any. Okay, 
Um, on March 16th, which was a Tuesday, March 17th, Wednesday, 18th or 19th, you don't have any incidents on those dates with regard to Mrs. Crumbly's son either. I don't remember any. Okay. If there, if there had been incidents involving Mrs. Crumbly's son on these specific dates, you, would you assume they would have been included in the emails of all the other dates that were included about? If there were emails of them, they would have been included. Okay, so we don't have any emails of March 16th, 17th, 18th, or 19th, correct? To my knowledge, no. We didn't see any emails um, or concerns that arose from, well, this is a Saturday, so probably not likely, Saturday, March 20th, correct? I, I don't know of any. Sunday, April 4th? I don't know of any. Not even the next day, Monday, April 5th? I don't know of any other meetings aside from the emails that have already been presented. Okay, so then in all fairness, when I'm April 29th and November 4th, same thing, you don't have any awareness of any I don't, mistakes. I don't know of anything specific towards those days. Okay. Now, you testified that it was your hope that Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly would take their son home and get him into a counselor that day, correct? Yes. Um, when you had that hope, you gave them a list of counselors um, to suggest they call and noting which ones took various insurance programs, correct? Yes, I provided a list of resources. Now, in terms of getting a counseling appointment within one day, you don't have any knowledge if those counselors on that list could guarantee a same day appointment, correct? I, I don't know counselor schedules and I can't speculate on what they would have had. Is it fair to say that in the post-COVID time of 2021, um, mental health services have, have become more difficult to obtain appointments? And if you don't know and you're not the right person to ask, just let me know. I don't work in community mental health, so I can't make that statement. Have you personally had to call to schedule therapy type appointments for anyone? I experienced a shooting. I called to cancel, to get therapy for myself. Okay, and when you called to get therapy for yourself, it was obviously a very, very urgent situation. I mean, it was a pretty impactful situation, yes. Okay, and did you end up seeing a counselor on the 30th? No, I was cooperating with law enforcement and still in our building on the 30th. Okay, so your appointment was sometime after the 30th, correct? It was after the 30th. And sometimes when you call to get a counseling appointment, there it's not unusual to have to wait a couple of days or to schedule it, correct? I think we're getting a little hypothetical with this, and I can't speculate on what's usual or not for counselors in this area. That's fair enough. I appreciate that. When you were speaking with Mrs. Crumbly's son, it's fair to say that you and Mrs. Crumbly's son discussed whether he wanted to stay in school that day or go home prior to the arrival of Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly. Is that correct? That did come up, yes. And Mrs. Crumbly's son position, son's position was, I want to stay in school, correct? Correct. COVID had been hard on him. He didn't like virtual <coughs> learning. Was that your understanding? He did state those two things, yes. And there was discussion when the parents arrived that missing school is a source of anxiety for Mrs. Crumbly's son. Do you recall that? I do. So before Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly even got there, the option for, the sh for Mrs. Crumbly's son to stay in school was on the table. Well, 
the option of, there is no option of staying in school. School is a requirement unless you meet certain standards in which it is no longer available to you. Okay, if a, if a child gets sick at school, at Oxford High School, and vomits, okay, are they allowed to stay in school the rest of the day? I don't know, that's not something I, I deal with. Are you aware if a child has a temperature, if they are al allowed to stay in school? And if you're not aware, let me know. If they are allowed to stay in school? Yes. If we didn't, like, again, hypothetical, but not my area, um, I don't send students home. Okay. Are you aware if the school will tell parents you need to take this child home if they are sick at school, physically sick? The only time I remember that being a discussion was during COVID. Okay, during COVID, were kids who were exposed to COVID allowed to be in school? No, because we were following rules and regulations outside of the school. So even if parents said, I want my child to be in school, he has COVID, but I want him to be there, that's not allowed, right? Judge, I have to object to relevance now. We're awfully far afield. No, I, I, I think he said that that's not up to him. That's maybe, maybe right. is that up to like the school nurse or some person? Like there that? is no school nurse. The, the COVID tracing was not through the school. That was through the county health department. All I'm asking is um, there are times where if, if a child is sick, it's not an option for them to be present in school. When the county health department regulated that, yes. Okay. And you testified that if there had been a discipline issue as to Mrs. Crumbly's son, that may have been grounds to make him have to go home that day, correct? That could be the case depending on the discipline issue. And in terms of the discipline issue, I realize you're not the discipline person, but the school has the option, uh, depending on what, what's correct, they could suspend a student, they could expel a student, there's processes over school discipline, correct? There is a process, I am not a part of that process. It's your testimony though that, it's your testimony that in this case, the school did not find a discipline issue with respect to Ethan, uh, to the, uh, to Mrs. Crumbly's son. That is correct. There was nothing that was determined as a discipline issue. So it was not a discipline issue that he was looking up bullets on his cell phone during a class. I would not be the one making that determination. In this case, that was that was not something he was disciplined for by the school. I, again, I already stated I was not a part of any potential disciplines. To my knowledge, no. Same thing with uh, watching videos on a phone. There was the school did not make a discipline issue that would cause Mrs. Crumbly's son to go home for sitting and watching videos on his phone during class. Correct. There was nothing that was determined to be a discipline issue. And. Mrs. Crumbly's son sitting and drawing on math paper instead of actually doing the math paper he's supposed to be doing, as far as you're aware, the school also didn't find there to be a disciplinary violation for that. Judge, Mr. Hoffman has already testified that discipline is in this area. That's Mr. Ejack's area. He, does, he doesn't make that determination, he said. I'll ask Mr. Ejack then when he testifies. Now, you did testify that one important thing was that you did not want Mrs. Crumbly's son to be alone, um, to be alone after you thought he was so sad and experiencing so much sadness, correct? I did not feel that it was wise for a student with signs that could be suicidal ideation and things that I saw as suicidal ideation to be alone. Now, when you um, spoke to Mrs. Crumbly's son, he also wanted to be around other peers that afternoon. He stated that he wanted to be in school. I don't remember him specifically stating anything about other peers. Do you recall telling Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly that 
that it would be good for him to be around other peers versus being alone? I don't remember specifically stating that to them. Is that something that you believe, or and if you if you can't answer the question, just please let me know. What is your question? My question is, is that something that you believe, that it would have been better for him to be around peers that afternoon versus being left home alone? It's the judgment call I made. It's the, I'm sorry, what was that? That is the judgment call I made, was that I felt it was better for him to be around peers and people who are his age than to be home alone. Thank you. May I have just a moment, Your Honor? I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hopkins, you were asked about the total picture by counsel, so I'd like to go through that with you. Um, on November the 30th, when you met with Jennifer Crumbly, did she tell you that on March the 9th of 2021, her son had texted her that he was seeing demons and bulls flying off the shelf? I did not. Okay, so on, did Jennifer Crumbly tell you that on March the 17th, her son had also texted her that he was hallucinating? No. Did Jennifer Crumley tell you that on March the 20th, he had texted his mother that he was hallucinating? Your Honor, I would ask that the prosecution stop the leading questions. Judge, I'm just trying to get through redirect in a timely fashion, and this is specifically okay. in response to her. I don't know how, how we can ask it another way. I'm not suggesting the answer, Judge. I'm just... Yeah, he's not suggesting the answer. I, he's asking a specific question. It's a yes or no question, right? Thank you, Judge. He's not suggesting the answer. So. Thank you. If you could read the last one. Sure. Did Jennifer Crumbly tell you that her son texted her on March the 20th, 2021, he was, that he was hallucinating? No. Did Jennifer Crumbly tell you that in April of 2001, she had told a friend of hers that she thought Ethan was depressed? <coughs> no. Did Jennifer Crumbly tell you that she had referred to her son as weird? No. Did Jennifer Crumbly tell you that she had never once set an appointment with any mental health professional? No. Did Jennifer Crumbly ever tell you that his only hobby was involving firearms? No. Did Jennifer Crumbly ever tell you that she posted on Instagram as early as June of 2021 that he had obtained his own handgun? No. Did Jennifer Crumbly ever tell you that the day before the shooting at 3 o'clock in the morning, she herself was researching clinical research or clinical depression options? No. Did Jennifer Crumbly tell you that she and her husband gave her son a six hour, nine millimeter handgun just four days before the shooting? No. Did Jennifer Crumbly ever tell you that um, on November the 30th, 2021, it wasn't the first time he asked for help? No. Did Jennifer Crumbly ever tell you that the gun that he drew on that math worksheet was identical to the six hour, nine millimeter handgun that You're was used in the shooting? I object to the prosecution's characterization that that drawing is identical. That's a conclusion that... System. That's fine. Did Jennifer Crumbly ever tell you that the day before, on, no, on November the 29th, on that Monday, the day before, after the voicemail was left for her from Pam Fine, she texted her son and said, LOL, you have to learn not to get caught. No. Did Jennifer Crumbly ever tell you that uh, James Crumley worked for DoorDash and had no obligation to not take their son home. No. Did Jennifer Crumley tell you that on November the 30th, she was permitted to leave work when she needed for family issues? No. Did Jennifer Crumley tell you that on November the 30th, the meeting that she allegedly had in the afternoon, she was not required to attend? No. Did Jennifer Crumley tell you ever that their son was struggling throughout the year 2021? She confirmed it based on what he had said in regards to COVID and virtual school. But they never went through these details. Not these details, no. So it took you all about 20 minutes to decide to request Jennifer Crumley to come into the school immediately. That's what you testified to? Yes. Is that the total picture that you wish you had? No. Now, what if Jennifer Crumley had told you all of these things I just went through? Your Honor, objection is to speculation. And hindsight is 2020. Would you like to have as much information as you possibly could have? Absolutely. Was their son still in the room <coughs> in your office when the defendant said she couldn't take him home? Yes. Nothing further. All right, you can step down. Your excuse. You guys want a break? Okay.
Okay, so we're going to take like 10 minutes, okay? All right, for the jury.
Testimony about the bill, there's a piece of hockey down. I do, Your Honor. Okay. So, uh, step up here and see the state your name for the record, spelling person, that's in. Joe Bryan, J O E B R I A N. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir, how are you employed? Employed at the detective sergeant, what do you open down here? Okay. Uh, can you keep your voice nice and loud, please? All right. Thank you. Now, Sergeant, uh, where do you work within the sheriff's office? I'm assigned to the special investigations unit. Okay, what do you do there? We conduct major investigations, internal affairs, assist a lot of other departments, anything kind of big we at least help out with. Okay. Now, November the 30th, 2021, um, were you working that day? I was. Okay. Were you assigned to assist in the investigation of the Oxford High School shooting? I was. Okay. And at this time, how long have you been with the Sheriff's Office? At that time, 27, 27 years and some change. Okay. So you're with the Special Investigative Unit now. Where did you work prior to that? Same spot, since 2011. Okay, what about prior to that? I ran a computer crimes unit for about eight years. Prior to that, <coughs> Sergeant Jail, de Sergeant, or Detective out in Highland, and then the jail. Okay. All right, so did, did you actually respond to the Oxford High School shooting scene? <coughs> did you respond to the shooting scene itself? Not initially. Okay. Um, were you directed to the um, Oxford substation, the sheriff's office? I was. Okay, and for what purpose? To attempt to do some interviews. Okay. Now, by the time that you had arrived at the Oakland County Sheriff's Office substation in Oxford, was the school shooter already in custody? Yes, he was. Okay, and was he brought to that location? He was. Okay. And during the course of your investigation, did you learn who the school shooter's parents are? I did. Okay. And his mother is Jennifer Crumbly? She is. She's in court today? Yes, she is wearing the dark blazer. The uh, defense counsel. The record will reflect the in-court identification of the defendant, Jennifer Crumbly. Thank you. Once you learned who the school shooter's parents were, did you at attempt to speak with those individuals? I did. Okay, and tell us how that came to be. I called him up and had him come to the substation to talk to me. Okay, so you learned the identities of James and Jennifer Crumbly and you made a phone call? Correct. Okay. So um, on Friday, we introduced evidence of call logs that showed you contacted James Crumbly about 1.50 in the afternoon, November the 30th. Does that sound accurate to you? That sounds about right. Okay. And when you made that phone call, what did you tell them to do? Just come to the sub, substation. In Oxford? Yes, sir. Okay. And did they arrive there? They did. Um, do you recall approximately the time they arrived there? Prior on two. It wasn't very, it wasn't, we didn't wait much 
for them to get there. Okay. And again, on Friday there was evidence of their GPS data locations that indicate they were there at 1.58 p.m. Does that sound, oh, sound accurate to you? Yes, sir. All right. When you conduct interviews with individuals pertaining to investigation, criminal investigation, are those interviews generally recorded? Most of the time. Is that audio um, recorded as well as video recorded? When available, yes. Okay. Does the Oxford substation, the sheriff's office, have the capability to record interviews in such a fashion? They did and do. Okay. Yes. So on no November the 30th, 2021, did you interview both James and Jennifer Kremlin? I did. Okay, and was that interview recorded? It was. Have you had the opportunity to review that recording? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that recording um, fairly and accurately depict your interview with James and Jennifer Crumbly on November the 30th, 2021? It does. Judge, that's People's 340. People move to admit. We have no objection. Uh, 340 is admitted. Thank you, Judge. I'm going to play it for the jury, but before we do, I just want to confirm with you, Sergeant, that the recording that we're going to introduce as evidence is Exhibit 340. It has a date and time stamp. Is that right? Correct. Okay, but that time stamp is actually an hour off? That's correct. Okay, is that daylight saving time? I don't know why it's okay. an hour. I really don't. That's fair. Um, <laughs> But we know that they arrived at 158 in the afternoon, and did you speak with them immediately after they arrived? Yes. Okay, so that would be the time you spoke with them, not 258. Correct. Okay, thank you. How, how long is it, Sergeant? Do you know? The video? Yeah. Like 15 minutes, probably. Okay. It's probably around, around 20 minutes or so. Okay. <coughs> so, Sergeant, as I get this queued up. This would have been right after they found out that their son was taken into custody for the Oxford High School shoot, school shooting? Correct. Just so we can identify everybody. This is you in the blue shirt? Yes, it is. And the individual to your left in the video is who? My partner, Rob Miller. Okay. Um, individual with the hat? James Crumbly. And the female in the video? Jennifer Crumbly. Okay. And again, this is 158 and 59 seconds, November 30th, 2021. Yes, sir. Is there, I hate to stop you, is it possible for you to have a 
have guns, ammunition, explosive devices? Are there any other victims? We need to know these things quite rapidly. Okay. I was in town. I saw all you guys go. Two. I don't care about them. When I see five, I start crying. I'm sorry. I headed to the high school. Obviously couldn't get to the high school. Turned into the Meyer parking lot. And I saw all these kids standing outside. I'm trying to call my son, make sure he's okay. And... He texted me that he loved me. He texted you that? And... Somebody said that there was an active shooter. 35 minutes before he called me, I was... I was down to the school. The situation... He was drawing that on the paper and the cops were called to town. So really? Um... What did the text say? I don't know. No, but it was texted to me. Oh. From the counselor. From the counselor. Um... I texted Ethan at 12.21, you okay? He said, yeah, I just got back from lunch. I said, you know, you can talk to us, we won't judge. He said, I know, thank you, I'm sorry for that, I love you. I said, I love you too. And then, you okay? I didn't hear back. And then, I didn't, he told me about what's going on. And I freaked out and I drove here from work. And that's that. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. What time did he text you? That was at 12.21. And he was just getting back from lunch. So you guys had a meeting with the counselor this morning over the school? Yeah. Can I say a little quick answer? Yeah. What, was it the first hour, second one? What time was it? I got to school at 10.30. I don't know what I remember. So it would have been earlier. First or second hour. I don't know. And what was, what did he say? I mean, he just, he just said he was sorry. Sorry, he just said, you know, I. Was he having issues? Like being kicked out? No. No. Not that, not that we know of. He, his best friend. His parents just sent him somewhere to Wisconsin for an OCD rehabilitation. That was his only friend that he had. They hung out all the time. He hung out at school. Our, our dog, our great care niece, just passed away a couple months ago. My mom died back in April. So, that's... So you got all the stressors going on? They didn't.
at school or he could go home, and I really wish we could take him home. home.
contact us and let us know where the corporal is going to be? The corporal. Yeah. When? A day or two. Could be today, could be tomorrow. I mean, it's a little bit of a right? Mm -hmm. So right now, I'm not sure about... I understand. We understand, right? So somebody will be in contact okay. because of his age. Yes. Okay. sobbing at the very end, was that the defendant or is that her husband? Oh, James. Your Honor, I would object. I, they're both crying at the end. I just, I think that's misleading. Well, the only one who can make that okay. is Sergeant Bryan. Okay, well, he has, he has personal knowledge. You can, yeah. you, can, you can rely on the evidence that you've seen, okay? You can, all, all the evidence that will be available for you when you deliberate as well, okay? And Sergeant Lee had some pauses in there. That's because personal information was being obtained from the defendants? Correct. Okay. Judge, I'm going to move to admit the transcript of the interview is Exhibit 424. The audio is a little bit um, verbal over the, the two TVs that the court has in the courtroom. Any objection? Your Honor, I have not seen 424. They have not sent it to me. We can so feel free to take a look at my copy while we, we can Okay. We're going to withhold the, uh, the Sub ruling. Subject to review. You can let me know in the next two days. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And likely, okay. no objection, but okay. I need to I need to see it. Thanks. This is a transcript? Yes, Judge. All right. Can that would be 424. We'll revisit tomorrow. Yeah, let, let me know. Let me know this time. Right. Okay. We'll do. Okay. Sure. Um, and Sergeant Bryan, what was your impression of the defendant's demeanor throughout the interview? Atypical, from what I'm used to on something like that. What do you mean? Your Honor, I would object as to his, the foundation, lack of foundation for this. I, sure. Uh, Sergeant Brown, you've been in the uh, Sheriff's Office for 29 years now? Yep, a couple months. Okay. And you've been with um, the Special Investigative Unit for over 10 years? Yes. Okay, and you already told us that that is the, the, the unit within the Sheriff's Office that handles the major investigations? <coughs> yes. Okay, that includes internal affairs? Correct. And it includes homicides? Correct. How many interviews of either witnesses or suspects of crimes have you think you've been a part of? 5,000, okay. maybe more. This is something you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Every day. Okay. And you described the defendant's demeanor as atypical? Correct. Okay. And tell us why. Your Honor, I would object as to this witness's opinion when the jury can see what's in the video. Every person in life reacts differently. This is very grossly unfair and prejudicial. That's argument. The counsel well, is free to make that argument. Is the best evidence of how she reacted to the video itself? Well, I think an officer with 30 years of experience is in a unique position to give that testimony. I think the, I think the jury can decide for themselves. The, the jury is going to see the evidence. They saw the videotape. They can decide if that her, her behavior is normal or not normal. Thank you, how, how do people, I, I guess you can ask how do people react when your children, you know, you, you've had other cases with, with children being charged. Thank, yes, not okay. a school shooting, but yes, I've had many cases where kids have done bad things. Okay. I've had to tell the parents. And you've had to tell the parents that? Yes. Okay. And what you experienced on, on November the 30th was not consistent with your Honor, experience. Your I object to them. Same thing. That was the court's question. I didn't hear the, I didn't hear the question. I was just following up with the court's question, Judge, that in his experience, he's he's had the opportunity to interview parents of a juvenile who's done something illegal. But what's a common reaction that you experience? Crying, disbelief, why, why? Your Honor, that, Your Honor. Okay. again, I object. It's irrelevant and it's prejudicial. And no other parents have had a child, their child, commit a school shooting. He just said, this is well, such a different case. <coughs> Well, he said in his experience, he hasn't talked to anyone else with a school shooting. Um, he said he's dealt with um, children who've done very bad things, right? This is like bad, 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 though. I mean, this is yeah. like... Well, we're, we're going to move on anyway. You guys can watch the video and decide for yourselves, okay? I've okay. nothing further, thank you. Okay, cross. 
It's fair to say that um, every parent reacts differently when confronted with news about their child. Yes. And you don't know Jennifer and James Crumbly, correct? No, I do not. And prior to this day, you had never met Ethan Crumbly? No. So whether their reaction was even normal for how they normally react, you wouldn't even know that. Correct. I have nothing further. Okay, go ahead. Just briefly. If, Your Honor, I do have one question. If I could just have a moment. Are you? I was just asking about an exhibit, Your Honor, that's listed through Mr. To, sorry, through oh. Sergeant Bryan, but it's coming in through a different. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure I'm keeping track. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That was only the video was the, and the transcript were the only ones. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, in your experience, you ever deal with a parent in this situation who's scrolling through her phone during this interview? No. Okay. Nothing further. Your Honor, I object as to relevance, and he, he, she's giving the phone to him. I at least ask for recross. You can ask him another question if you want. Go ahead. Go ahead. While Mrs. Crumley is showing you things from her phone during the interview, correct? She showed me the picture, yes, ma'am. And she's trying to zoom in on the picture, and the, the thing won't zoom in, correct? Correct. And she's sitting there scrolling, looking for it, on other messages and threads. Or you, you, I don't know. You don't know. I okay. Don't know. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay, you can step down. And Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Can you just move your approach?
there are a large um, number of, of exhibits that we want to tailor um, for you, pictures of the scene and things like that. So rather than have you hang out while we do that, um, I'm going to release you for the day, all right? And have you come at 8.30 in the morning, all right? I'm going to get started at 8.30 in the morning. During this trial, do not read, listen to, or, or watch any news reports about the case. Under the law, the evidence you are to consider to decide the case must meet certain standards. For example, witnesses must swear to tell the truth, and the lawyers must be able to cross-examine them. Because news reports do not have to meet these standards, they can give you incorrect or misleading information that might unfairly favor one side. So to be fair to both sides, you must follow this instruction. Do not go on social media. Do not go on Facebook or post or read Facebook. Do not do research. Do not discuss the case with anyone. Don't read a newspaper. Don't watch the news. Any questions about that? We're, make, we're making good time, but I don't you guys hang, it's easier for us to go through the exhibits while you're driving home. It'll be quicker this way. Okay? Any questions about the schedule? All right. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow at 8.30, okay? All rise for the jury. spending time together and first judge what I'd like to do is go through our exhibits with that we have with detective stoic those are the exhibits that council objects to okay. what I want to do is remove the specific exhibits that we have agreed upon okay and then we can come back in here and the court can rule upon the balance okay so maybe if we it'll take 15 or 20 minutes for me to do that. We just went through it. Okay, so you you're gonna let me know. Yes, if that's if that's agreeable. That, that's that's fine. I wasn't. I, I was trying to figure out at the bench what the exact process is that you were asking about. So you're gonna you are going to spend some time with Miss Smith, and you're gonna let me know. Yes. Okay. First, we have to. I'm gonna fix the exhibit list. Okay. And then sure. I'll get a copy to Miss Smith as well as the court, and then we'll I'll speak with Miss Smith. Okay. And if we don't have a complete agreement, we'll let the court know. And then the court can make the uh, eventual ruling. Is that t that's today? Yes, Judge. If, okay. if the court is able to stay, I'm 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 I'll stay as forever. I just I just have to sweet talk the deputies into staying with you. So. It shouldn't take terribly long. Okay. All right. So you let me know. Yes, Judge. Is it okay if we just sit here, Your Honor? It is okay if you sit here. If you want her to stay with you. Can so. she stay? With yeah, me? she can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're going through exhibits. Um, okay, so you're gonna let me know. Yes. Sir. Um, please, please keep, keep in mind that there. Uh, are you guys still gonna film or? Uh, yeah, I don't know because I, I want to make sure I don't get complaints about um, me picking up privileged communication or. I think that's. I think that's up to you, Your Honor. That's a question. It is. <laughs> um, it's your courtroom, though. I like this guy. Um, yeah, why don't we not record while they're going through exhibits, and then and then when we go back to, rec to on the record and make rulings about it, because she's she's going to talk to her client, and you know that's okay. All right, good.